Not this Christmas. A Christmas on Palmer Island Romance Written by Suzanne Ash Chapter 1 Paige Taylor walked into her Denver apartment after a long day at work and went straight to the fridge to pour herself a hot chocolate. She deserved the sweet treat after a day like today. Her eyes flew to the calendar on the fridge. Two more weeks until the big day, and the last thing she wanted was to go back to Palmer Island, the small island off the South Carolina coast she'd fled three years ago. Helen, what can I do for you? Paige didn't expect to hear from her sister's wedding planner today. I need your shoe size, Helen Williams, Palmer Island's most successful event planner, said when her face appeared on the screen of Paige's phone. Why? Paige picked a dry macaroni noodle from an earlier art project off her dress. At least this time it wasn't glitter. Your sister saw these cute silver slippers, and she's getting the entire wedding party matching pairs. They'll look cute with your dress, Helen added. You don't sound convinced. Paige didn't think she looked it either. It will look good, I promise. Plus, they'll barely peek out from under the maid of honor dress we ordered for you. Will you be here in time for a final fitting? If we can give the seamstress. About that. Is there any way someone else could be maid of honor? Maybe Kathy? Her sister's best friend would be much better in the position. Why? Helen's voice was high and too loud over the phone, and her eyebrows were almost touching her hairline. I'm not sure I'll be able to make it. There's a ton of work to catch up on, and the weather doesn't look great. Paige tapped her pencil on the notepad in front of her. It was filled with doodles. Paige, you can't skip your sister's wedding. You have to be here. I really don't think I can. Paige hadn't set foot back on Palmer Island since her grandfather had passed. She wasn't about to return, especially not this time of the year. Faye would never forgive you. I would never forgive you. Heck, I'm pretty sure the rest of your family would feel the same way. It's her wedding. Besides, don't you want to see your folks for Christmas? Helen asked. Sure, but we have a really short winter break this year. The kids come back on the 4th. Which meant it would be a mad dash across the country and back. It's not that bad. The flight is what? Three, four hours? You'll be here in no time. Helen's voice sounded chipper, but it was hard to ignore the worried undertone. About that. Please don't tell me you're afraid of flying. Helen groaned. Okay. She didn't like planes, but being scared was a bit of an exaggeration. One page wasn't about to fess up to. Maybe this was the way out she'd been searching for since the moment her baby sister announced this ridiculous wedding. You are, aren't you? Let me think. The line grew quiet, and Paige was about to ask Helen if she was still there. I'll figure something out. Paige, you have to be here for this. Got it? Got it. You'll figure out a way to get me there that doesn't involve planes, helicopters, or Greyhound buses. What's wrong with the bus? Helen asked, her pen scratching something out on the notepad that was barely in the screen of the video feed. Too cramped and small. Doesn't help on planes either. I don't like tight spaces or feeling like I'm trapped. This wasn't a lie. She'd been a bit claustrophobic since that time Tommy Scarborough shoved her into a locker in middle school. No bus, got it. Hang tight, I'll figure out a way to get you here. I'm guessing driving isn't an option? Helen asked. It's a long way to go by myself. Something she was perfectly capable of, but her mother would have a heart attack at the thought of her oldest daughter driving thousands of miles by herself. Plus, I'm not sure my car would make it there and back again. All right. I'll figure something out. I'll call you in a day or two. Helen took her leave and Paige wondered if it made her a horrible person that she hoped the event planner wouldn't. Of course it makes you a bad person. You can't skip your sister's wedding. I'm pretty sure it's one of those things like breaking a mirror. Bad luck will follow you for seven years or something. 
or you're doomed to live your life alone. Colleen, a fellow elementary school teacher, told her over dinner the next day. They were at the Mile High, their favorite Denver diner like every Friday night since they'd bonded over an outbreak of lice that had taken days to get under control. One of the many joys of working with a bunch of five-year-olds. I don't think that's true. Paige glanced at the menu, considering ordering something different than her usual grilled chicken sandwich with a small side salad, dressing on the side. Fine, but are you willing to risk it? Besides, if I were your sister, I'm not sure I'd ever forgive you. A wedding is a big deal. I know. Paige groaned when I'll be home for Christmas started to play. Her grandfather had loved the song. When are they going to stop playing this stuff nonstop? December 27th. Until then, it's all Christmas all the time. What else do you expect? Colleen asks. Paige shrugged. Can't we just pretend it isn't happening? What's turned you into such a Grinch, her friend asked when their server walked up to take their order. Can I get a grilled chicken sandwich and a side salad? Paige asked the young man. He looked familiar. Dressing on the side? Yes, please. How about you? The server turned to Colleen, and Paige realized he'd waited on them a couple of weeks ago. Unlike my friend here, I'm ready for some actual food. Let me get the mile high burger, medium rare, a side of onion rings, and a large coke. We don't all have to fit into a sheath dress that's probably a size too small, Paige muttered, doing her best to block out the holiday decorations and the music that continued to blare from the speakers in the ceiling. Oh, good. I guess that means you've come to your senses. You're the maid of honor. What's the big deal, anyway? Colleen asks. I don't want to go back home. Especially not this time of year. Paige busied herself unwrapping the flatware and spreading out the napkin. You love your family. You talk about them all the time, and it was plain to see when your folks came out for a visit this summer. Colleen looked at her across the table of the small booth in the back they were sitting in. I do. It's not that I don't want to spend time with them. Paige wrapped her arms around herself, suddenly feeling a chill, and she didn't think it was a draft from the door that opened to let another group of hungry diners in. Then what is it, honey? You look like you're going to be sick. Colleen's voice changed from teasing to concerned. I don't want to talk about it. Let's just say Christmas hasn't been the same the past few years. Paige reached back for her winter coat and draped it across her legs. All right, let's enjoy our dinner. But I'm here if you want to talk. If I didn't have my mom, I'd offer to come with you. You know, for moral support. Not to escape the cold and the snow. Paige laughed out a laugh. Right. Nothing to do with the milder temperatures or being right on the beach. Stop talking, or we can't be friends anymore. Colleen sat back and turned to look in the direction of the kitchen. Hungry? Paige asked. Starved. Didn't get a chance to eat anything at lunch. Every single one of my kids needed help opening bags, and what's with everyone sending those juice pouches? Was there a sale or something? They are a pain in the... Tell me about it. I'm wearing a nice dab of fruit punch on my shirt today. Thankfully, the juice drink that squirted out of the straw when Paige finally managed to shove it in there matched the fuchsia color of her top. They should be outlawed. Paige agreed wholeheartedly. And there should be some rule that kindergartners could only bring lunch items they were capable of opening themselves. First thing in August, I work with all my kids on opening packages. It takes a while for them to get the hang of it, but once they do, it makes lunchtime so much easier. I'll have to try that next year. Either that or hope that we get classroom assistance again. At least for lunch. Keep wishing. Or maybe ask Santa for it, because that's the only way it'll happen. Their school district had struggled with staffing like so many other schools. Right. Oh, good, the food is here. Colleen all but dragged her plate from the server's hands and dug into her burger. Paige shook her head and looked at her pale sandwich, thinking she'd made a mistake. 
but if she ended up attending her sister's wedding, it couldn't hurt to shed a few pounds. Her phone lit up when Paige walked back into her apartment an hour later. It was Helen Williams calling. I can't deal with this tonight. Paige pressed the button to send it straight to voicemail and got ready for bed. Chapter 2 Do either of you care to explain what this is about? Liam asked. He was sitting in his best friend and college roommate's living room, across from Helen Williams. The wedding planner had been the bane of his existence since Matteo had asked him to be his best man. I will. But first, Faye can't find out about this. She'd freak out. Matteo ran a hand through his hair, his lips tight. Okay? Liam sat up, alarm bells going off in the back of his head. It's Paige. She's trying to get out of the wedding. Faye would be devastated if we can't get her here. Right. I can see why you wouldn't want to tell her. What he couldn't figure out was what this had to do with him. He didn't know Paige well. They'd met and exchanged a few pleasantries at the couple's engagement party, but that had been it. Faye's sister had moved out west before he'd settled down on Palmer Island. We're trying to talk her into attending, but there's a small hiccup. Helen turned to face him. What can I do to help, he asked. We were hoping you would go pick her up, Matteo said. From the airport? That shouldn't be a problem. He didn't love the drive up to Myrtle Beach and it would be busy a few days before Christmas, but he'd manage. From Colorado. Denver, to be exact, Helen said, putting her phone down and leaning forward, hands folded together, eyes trained on him. Denver, Colorado. You want me to drive clear across the country to pick her up? He couldn't have heard right. They were talking thousands of miles. Only to turn around and bring her here for the wedding. I'm not asking you to drive clear to the Pacific. Denver is what? 30, 35 hours away? It's barely two thirds across the country. Matteo cracked a smile, but Liam could tell his heart wasn't in it. 27 hours non stop, to be exact. I have it pulled up if you want to see. It shouldn't be too bad of a drive. It's closer than the drive to Phoenix. Helen handed him her phone, but he waved her off. I know it's a big ask, Matteo said. What's in Phoenix? Liam asked, needing to distract himself for a moment. My boyfriend. It's really not that bad of a drive. You can do it in two days, but I've driven it through. It's not fun, but sometimes a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. She shrugged, putting her phone down beside her. Two days there, two days back. I don't have time for something like that. Liam sat back, looking at the two people in front of him. They couldn't be serious. This was a crazy ask. Come on, man. It's for my wedding. It's the only way we can get her down here. Matteo was looking at him, pleading with him to say yes to this crazy road trip. Why doesn't she fly in? Like a normal person? Liam asked. What was wrong with this chick? At this point, he'd get her the ticket if it meant getting out of this ambush of a meeting. She's afraid to fly, Helen said. The woman blinked, and for the briefest of moments Liam got the idea she may be just as exasperated with the maid of honor to be as he was. And she can't drive? Take a train? A bus? He knew he was grasping, but all of the above seemed more reasonable to him than having someone chauffeur the little princess clear across the country. Her car won't make it. Besides, my future mother-in-law doesn't like the idea of her traveling alone. She's a kindergarten teacher. Liam raised an eyebrow. You know how they are. Kind and trusting. Her mom's afraid someone would take advantage of her or rob her or something. Matteo shrugged. He didn't buy it either. More importantly, this guarantees she'll make it in time for the ceremony. And doesn't back out again at the last minute, Helen added. It was the first valid point he'd heard either of them make. Fine. I get it. But why does it have to be me? I can't take off for a week to do this. 
I'm stuck in the office until the day before the wedding, Mateo said. And I have to be here to make sure everything goes as planned, or I'd do it myself. Helen picked up her phone and scrolled through messages. And you expect me to take off, just like that? I have a job too. Liam shook his head again. It's the holidays. Nobody wants to talk about finances until those credit card statements come in at the first of the year. You can't be that busy. Mateo's gaze intensified. It was approaching puppy dog stare. Not a good look on a grown man. They'd have to talk about that. And it's really not that bad to drive it straight. Grab a couple of cups of coffee along the way, and you're good to go. Helen looked at him confidently. And then turn around and do it all again? That's a good 50 hours without sleep. It didn't strike him as a particularly safe way to travel. I'm sure Paige wouldn't mind if you crashed on her couch for the night. Or a couple of hours. I know it's a huge favor. I wouldn't have come to you with this if there was any other way. There's got to be some other way. Let me think, Liam got up and paced the room, thoughts whirling, skipping from one option to the next, dismissing each in turn. There isn't. Besides, you owe me. Mateo rose as well and gave him the look. The one that reminded them of the time in college when he'd saved Liam's bacon and taken the heat for the alcohol they'd had in their dorm. Liam had kept his scholarship and been able to graduate. Mateo was right. He did owe him. He just wished he'd traded that favor in some other time. You're doing what? His mother asked when Liam called her the next morning. I'm driving out to Denver to pick up Faye's sister for the wedding. He'd mapped the route out. He had a few days before he had to get on the road and wouldn't need much more than an overnight bag. Why? Because Mateo asked me. She has some issues flying, and they're worried she's trying to get out of the wedding or something. Anyway, he sent me to fetch her. I leave in three days. He was cutting it close, but there was no way he could afford to be on the road for four days. The plan was to drive through and crash on her couch for a quick nap, then take a day and a half to drive back. That allowed for eight hours at a motel somewhere and gave them a bit of cushion to make it for the big day. You're a good friend, you know. Not everyone would drop what they are doing for something like this, his mother said, sounding pleased. I know. He hadn't planned on it, and if he didn't owe Mateo, he would have thought of a way to get out of this. Because his mom was right. It was a big one. Why don't you come by for a quick visit? Your great aunt Lydia would love to see you. Mom, I don't really have time for that. Plus, it would add hundreds of extra miles to a trip that was already much longer than he liked. If you're driving this far out, you might as well. It's been weeks since we've seen you. We could have an early Christmas, his mother said. I wish I could, but I can't take any extra time off, before Christmas. He had a few client meetings scheduled and plenty of research and marketing to do for the first of the year when his business picked up steam again. You don't have to stay long. One night. I miss you. His mother was full-on pleading with him now. Liam swallowed hard. He missed them, too. It had been strange being so far away from his family. Back when they'd lived in Nashville, he'd been able to make the drive out from Palmer Island once or twice a year. But since they'd moved to Santa Fe to care for his great-aunt, it had been a different story. If it wasn't for Mateo's wedding, he'd probably be out there for a visit right now. I'll think about it. Let me see if I can move some things around. He walked to his desk and looked at the large calendar nailed to the wall above it. We'd love to have you. And, Liam, if it doesn't work out before Christmas, maybe you could stop by when you drive her back. His heart sank to his knees. It hadn't occurred to him that Paige would need to get back to Denver after the wedding. This was getting better and better. He sighed and took his leave from his mother. Taking a closer look at the calendar, he moved meetings around, sent off a few emails, and jotted down a quick packing list. Maybe, just maybe he could pull off a quick 12-hour visit with his folks. 
Liam hoped they wouldn't mind if he slept through a good chunk of it. Chapter 3 Paige stared at the handsome hunk of a man snoozing on her couch. Liam Finnegan had shown up at her doorstep three and a half hours ago, looking dead on his feet. He'd chugged a glass of water and had asked her to be ready in four hours. Then the man had taken up residence on her second-hand couch, put an arm over his eyes, and thirty seconds later, he'd fallen asleep. Her phone rang, and Paige answered quickly, glad Liam didn't wake up. Instead, he rolled over on his side and resumed his soft snoring before Paige reached her bedroom. Hang on. What's going on, and why are you whispering? Colleen asked. Liam's here. He's napping. She softly closed the door and sat cross-legged on her bed. Your driver? What's he like? Is he hot? Colleen asked, sounding a bit like her best friend from high school. He looks all right. Bit tired and grumpy, though. He barely said three words to me before he passed out. That doesn't sound good. Especially if the two of you are going to be stuck in the car together for the next two days. Day and a half. And it's not supposed to be a fun road trip. All this was Helen's idea, and I'm sure the poor guy isn't thrilled about having to come get me. I guess that means there's no way you can get out of your sister's wedding, Colleen said, sounding way too happy about the prospect. Guess not. She'd held up hope that he'd have engine trouble or something on the way out but those had been dashed when he'd shown up on her doorstep. Listen, I called to warn you. There's a rumor going around that a couple of teachers quit right before winter break. Principal Grant is shuffling people around to different grades. Just a heads up in case you get a call. Paige groaned. As the latest addition to their elementary school staff, she was the lowest one on the totem pole and would likely be the first one to get reassigned. I hope not. I like these kids. Finally, have them trained. I know, sweetie. Try not to let it ruin your trip. And who knows? Maybe you'll keep your class. Good luck at the wedding and send pictures. Including some of your handsome driver. Colleen giggled and hung up. Paige was checking her bags for the third time to make sure she wasn't forgetting anything important when she heard a soft knock on the door. Ready to go, she asked when she saw Liam standing in front of her. He was taller than she'd realized, and boy did he smell good. A cloud of cinnamon, sandalwood, and something else she couldn't quite put her finger on enveloped her. How could he smell this good after two days on the road? Almost. I was hoping we could grab some food first. I'm starving. Any place around here we can get a quick meal? Liam asked, leaning against the door jamb. Paige took a step back and turned to grab her purse. Sure. There's a diner down the street. We can take my car. Sounds good. He didn't move. Paige pushed past him and waited for the man to follow her out the door so she could lock it. I see why you didn't want to drive this to Palmer Island, Liam said when he got into her 2001 Kia Rios. It had originally been silver, but these days, more and more rust appeared, giving the car a rustic splotchy look. I know. It barely made it out here. Works for my daily commute, but that's about it. Thinking about upgrading, he asked as she pulled out of her parking spot and onto the busy road. I wish. They don't exactly pay teachers the big bucks. Paige shrugged. She was trying to set aside a little money each month for a new car, but any time she'd accumulate a few hundred bucks, something would come up that would eat into her meager savings. Guess not. I could help you set up a budget. Recommend some savings accounts if you'd like? Liam looked out the window, taking in the suburban neighborhood they drove through. Why? Paige asked, slightly annoyed. What did the guy think? She couldn't manage her money? It's what I do. I'm a financial advisor. Liam's head turned when they passed the old movie theater. It was a sight to behold with its art deco style. I'm okay, but thanks for the offer. Paige was glad the diner was close by. They pulled into the parking lot and, by some miracle, 
a parking spot close to the entrance opened up. This place decent? Liam asked. Best breakfast around in these parts and affordable, Paige said, opening the door. The scent of freshly brewed coffee and bacon hit her the moment she walked in. It's almost two in the afternoon, Liam said when she waved at Peggy and led the way to her favorite booth. They serve breakfast all day. But there's other stuff too. They're famous for their burgers. Paige slid into the booth and waited for Liam to take the seat across from her. Peggy walked over and handed each of them a menu. What can I get y'all to drink? Coffee, they said in unison. Coming right up. Liam held up a hand and glanced at the menu in front of him. Do you mind if we go ahead and order? We're in a bit of a rush. Sure thing, hun. What can I get you? Peggy pulled out a notepad and looked at Liam. Double cheeseburger, well done, with American cheese and add bacon. I'll take a side of fries and a water. How about you, Paige? Grilled chicken sandwich? Peggy asked. Paige shook her head. I'm in the mood for breakfast. Can I get the egg white omelette and a fruit bowl please? Water for you, too. Peggy asked. Coffee's fine. They had a long drive ahead of them, and she didn't want to make him stop every 20 minutes to find a bathroom. I'll get that right out to you. Peggy walked off, leaving Paige alone with the man she was about to spend a lot of time in cramped quarters with. The thought made her take a deep breath. So, tell me about yourself. You and Mateo were college roommates or something? Helen had been sparse on the details, and Paige had been too much in denial to ask for specifics when she'd called the wedding planner back a few days ago and learned about this harebrained idea. Yes. Liam looked down on his phone and scrolled through messages. All right then. You're not the chatty kind, I get it. I thought, she shook her head. Liam looked up. You thought what? His voice wasn't exactly rude, but not friendly either. I thought we could get to know each other a little before we get on the road. That's all. No big deal. What would you like to know? He put his phone down and looked at her. He didn't stare or anything, but Paige felt pulled to those hazel eyes of his. She also noticed his five o'clock shadow for the first time and wondered when he'd had a chance to shower and shave last. Are you a good driver? Paige blurted out when she realized he was waiting for her to answer. His mouth turned up into an impish grin. I'd like to think so. Haven't had a ticket for at least six years, and the only accident I'd been in was the other driver's fault. Right. That's what they all say, Paige muttered without thinking too distracted by the effect his small smile had on the state of her nervous system. Would you like to grab a quick shower before we head out? Paige said when they walked back into her apartment. Liam raised his arm and sniffed. Do I need one? Paige felt the heat creeping up her neck and into her ears. She had no doubt her cheeks were bright red, and one look at Liam confirmed it. I just thought. It's very kind of you, but I think I'm good. I showered at my parents' place this morning. Your parents? This surprised her. She was sure Helen had told her he lived on Palmer Island and drove all the way out here to pick her up. They are living in Santa Fe, temporarily. Since I was coming all the way out here, I thought I'd stop for a quick visit. How nice, she said and went through her checklist of things she needed to do before they left. That's debatable. Ready to get on the road? If we leave now, we can avoid the worst of the rush hour traffic through Denver. Of course. I'm all packed, but there are a few things I need to do. She watered her two little plants that brightened up the otherwise lifeless apartment. Living in a large city was hard, even if it was Denver, which had more green space than other metropolitan areas. She missed being surrounded by trees and grass, but mostly, she missed the ocean and the smell of the salt-laden air when it blew inland. With a little luck, the snake and spider plants would survive her quick trip back home. 
Don't forget to turn down the thermostat, Liam said, flopping down on the couch and flipping through an early childhood education magazine laying on the coffee table. Paige shook her head and bit back her tongue. It was good advice, but he sounded a little too much like her dad. She lowered the temperature and pulled the shades before retrieving her luggage from the bedroom. It took two trips and when she finally dragged her large trunk of a suitcase into the living room, Liam raised an eyebrow. It's a wedding. And Christmas. I need options. Paige didn't admit that she'd packed almost her entire closet, minus her school clothes, into the bags. And of course she needed her makeup, hair care items, and who knew what shoes would go with each of the outfits she'd packed. It had been easier to dump them all into the trunk her mother had given her when she'd left for college. I'm not sure all of this is going to fit, Liam said, his eyes roaming over her luggage. It better, she said, putting her hands on her hips in her best impression of Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde. Chapter 4 What did you put in here? Rocks? Liam asked. The trunk was a pain to maneuver down the tight staircase, and he was more out of shape than he'd realized. The rare visits to the gym only went so far and apparently, running on the beach didn't help much with upper body strength. I can carry it. Paige tried to push past him and grab the case. Don't. I've got it. It was all he could do to keep it from tumbling down the last set of stairs. Fine, do it your way. She adjusted the large duffel bag that was larger than the one he'd brought and held who knew what and pushed past him. At least she had the sense to hold the door open for him. Thanks. Liam got the trunk out the door and carried it down the small distance to his car. He grabbed his keys and unlocked the Subaru Outback. Before he got a chance to pop the trunk, Paige climbed into the back seat, arranging her bags and shoving his overnight bag on the floorboard. Ready to head back up for the rest of the stuff, she asked. There's more? Help me get this in here first. Liam popped the trunk, and with both of them lifting, tilting, and shoving, they finally managed to get it in. Liam wondered if he should take her up on the offer to shower after this unexpected workout. The trunk-like suitcase barely fit into his trunk, but there was a little space left. He found his own bag under a pile of her stuff and moved it to the trunk for safekeeping, hoping his electric razor and the gift his parents gave him weren't completely crushed. Just a couple more bags. Plus snacks. Paige smiled and waited for him to lock the car before heading back upstairs. Liam watched her make a couple of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. She cut them into small squares and popped them into a plastic food container. Next, she poured a bunch of frozen grapes into a bag and put everything into a small cooler, topping it with plenty of ice. He had no idea where that thing was going. Want some coffee, to go? There's plenty left, she asked, holding up a couple of silver, insulated cups, with lids. That's not a bad idea. How do you take yours, she asked, looking back at him over her shoulder. Black. Mind if I use your bathroom before we get on the road? He wanted to at least splash some water on his face. Go ahead. I'll fix a few more snacks and go through the last of my checklist. She pointed to a small list on the kitchen counter. Most items were checked off. By the time he'd returned, she was almost ready. What's left, he asked, glancing at her list. Taking out the trash and shutting off the water. Paige walked over to the digital thermostat and adjusted it. Isn't shutting off the water a little overkill? he asked. My landlord insists. If we're gone for more than 20 hours, he wants us to cut it off. I guess there was an incident a few years back. She pointed to a faint stain on the ceiling. It spread across a good portion of the room. The damage must have been substantial. One more trip and Paige making a mad dash back upstairs to make sure the coffee maker was unplugged later, they were finally on the road. Liam glanced at the clock on the dash. It was a little later than he'd planned to leave, but so far, they were making good time through Denver. Take a right here, Paige said, pointing to a small side street that led into a neighborhood. 
Are you sure? he asked. The directions on the GPS sent them in the opposite direction. Do you live here, or do I? It's a shortcut to the interstate. I bet it'll shave a good ten minutes of our time, she said with so much confidence that he ignored the GPS and followed her lead. They did make it to I-70 eventually, but by the time the directions on his phone's GPS had adjusted, they'd lost a good fifteen minutes instead of gaining them. We'll have to have a conversation about what constitutes a shortcut, he muttered. Oh, please. I forgot that it takes us further back. It'll be fine. We'll make that up in no time. Switch to the right lane. There are a couple of eighteen-wheelers up ahead. She pointed her finger, almost touching the windshield. Liam bit his tongue and moved into the left lane, only to return a few moments later when those trucks moved at least five miles over the speed limit and a line of cars formed behind him. They might be willing to speed in the middle of a city, but he wasn't that stupid. He got the feeling it was going to be a very long two days before they made it back to Palmer Island. Don't do that, he barked when Paige started fiddling with the heat, the airflow, and finally, the radio. Why not? She sounded as pleased as he felt to spend the next thirty-plus hours in this car together. Because this is my car, and I have everything set the way I like it. Liam slammed on the brakes as the traffic in front of them came to a sudden stop. I get that, but you have a passenger now. Me. Paige pointed at herself before turning the vent a little farther away from her. Fine. But try not to mess with anything else. Liam loved this car. It was the first big item he'd paid for himself, and he'd worked hard to make those car payments all through high school and college. It may not mean much to anyone else, but his car was special and he planned on driving it as long as humanly possible. Go it. Hands off the gadget. Want a snack since we're stuck? She reached back and pulled the small cooler into her lap, offering him the frozen grapes. Liam accepted a handful. They were colder than expected and sticky. Try not to get anything on the seats. There are napkins in the dash. I have it covered. Paige ate a few grapes herself before digging around in one of the large tote bags scattered around the car. Traffic's moving again, he warned before shifting into first. It was slow, but at least they were no longer stopped. Here. Paige turned back and held out a bag of baby wipes. He stared at her, trying to figure out what they were for. To clean your hands. Those grapes were stickier than I thought. Wouldn't want to mess up your steering wheel. She grinned and handed him two of the wipes. Thanks. He hoped the damage to the steering wheel from those wipes would be minimal and figured he could cover it if needed after the holidays. I wonder what's causing this delay, Paige said, peering off to the side to get a glimpse at the road ahead of them. So did he. Whatever it was, he hoped it was short lived. Chapter 5 Looks like we're through the worst of it, Paige said when they passed the construction area that caused the sudden slowdown on the interstate. About time. Liam reached for his coffee cup. We'll make it up. Worst comes to worst, we'll take turns driving. That should shave off quite a bit of time. Paige glanced at the GPS display on his phone. They had 24 hours of pure driving time left before they made it to the island she grew up on. I might have to take you up on that. Liam put his coffee cup down and passed a slow-moving car. Paige picked up her phone and checked work email. There shouldn't be much, since the school was closed for winter break, but it couldn't hurt to stay on top of stuff while she had the chance. After clearing out a few maintenance notifications and wishes for a Merry Christmas from fellow teachers, one of them complete with an illustrated digital greeting card that played annoying music that she deleted quickly, she saw a message from Principal Grant, marked urgent. Miss Taylor. Due to some unforeseen scheduling challenges, you will be reassigned to teach second grade upon return after winter break. You will take over Mrs. Whitehorn's class. Please arrive a day early to set up your room and see attached curriculum and guidelines. I know this will be a challenge, but I am confident you will rise to it. 
He closed by wishing her and her family happy holidays. Right. Paige closed her eyes and counted to ten in her head. What's wrong? Liam asked, glancing at her before looking back at the road ahead of him. Traffic was thinning as they got farther away from Denver, but it was still busy. Nothing. She turned off her phone and put it in her lap, pinching her nose in an attempt to relieve some of the pressure building in her head. Fine, if you don't want to talk about it, Liam changed lanes and stepped on it, passing another row of slow-moving cars. It's work-related. Paige leaned back and took in a calming breath. You teach, right? Liam asked. I usually teach kindergarten. My principal just informed me that I'll be moving up to second grade when we get back from break. That's exciting. She barked out a laugh. Isn't it? he asked, looking confused. Why would that be exciting? She shook her head. You're moving on up. Older kids, and all that. Plus, I'm guessing it pays better? It doesn't. I'm an elementary teacher. My paycheck will be equally dismal. It'll be a lot more work, though. How so? I'd think they'd be less trouble the older they got. In some ways, yes. The thing is, I spent a lot of time bonding with my five-year-olds. We're finally getting into a good groove. Basically, I'm starting over with an entirely different group of 25 kids. Paige hoped the class sizes wouldn't increase beyond that. It can't be that big of a difference, right? They are still a bunch of snotty-nosed kids you're keeping busy so their parents can go to work. Is that what you think I do? Babysit kids all day? Paige leaned forward and crossed her arms, her temper rising. I'm sure that's not all you do. You've got to teach them to count and color and stuff, right? He settled into the right lane and pushed a button Paige assumed was the car's cruise control. The open highway stretched out all the way to the horizon now that traffic was easing up. Again, there's more to it than that. And second grade is a whole different kettle of fish. I'll be spending my time between now and January 5th making lesson plans. She'd need worksheets, homework assignments. Paige opened her phone and made a list of everything she needed to do to be at least semi-prepared. She hoped the fellow second grade teachers would help her get up and running. Unless everyone got shuffled around. I'll take your word for it. I'm sure you'll do fine. Liam reached over and turned on the radio. He fiddled with the dials until it changed from static to a modern pop station. Paige bobbed her head in time with the music for a second, recognizing the song as a recent favorite before he changed it. He skipped right over a popular country station, a channel that played mariachi music, and a talk radio show, only to land on a Christmas song. Paige waited for him to move on to the next station, but Liam put his hand back on the wheel and hummed along with the chorus to the song. It was catchy, she gave it that. Twenty miles later, she'd had about as much Christmas music as she could handle. Liam was singing the chorus to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas off the top of his lungs. And the man could sing. You have a good voice, she said when the station switched to a commercial. Thanks. I was in a band in high school. Lead singer. He grinned, looking more relaxed than she'd seen him. What kind of band, she asked, telling herself she wasn't actually curious to learn more about him. Just keeping busy on a long road trip and doing her best to drown out the next Christmas tune. Liam turned down the volume. We mostly played punk, believe it or not. Not Christmas tunes, she teased. He shook his head. No. Basically, I spent my junior and senior year giving my mom a headache. We practiced in our garage, he added. Did you play somewhere? We had a couple of gigs. Nothing major. We'd hoped to play prom our senior year, but the committee hired a DJ instead. I wonder why, she said, finding herself smirking at the thought of a young Liam and his friends blaring into microphones at prom. I know, right? He grinned as well and reached over to turn up the volume when a new song started. Paige didn't have the heart to ask him to change the station. 
Besides, this time of year, it was impossible to find one that didn't play non-stop holiday music. At least this one stuck mostly to poppy tunes. She even found herself humming along to a Carrie Underwood, John Legend collaboration, earning her a grin from Liam that did something funny to her stomach. Either that or those grapes had been a bad idea. They made good time, and Paige began to relax when I'll Be Home for Christmas started to play. She knew what song it was three notes in and fought the urge to reach over and press the power button. She turned her head and focused on the scenery out the window, glimpsing a prairie dog colony a few yards off the side of the road. Tears were pooling in her eyes as the song played on, Liam singing along with it. What's wrong? A warm hand covered hers. Paige blinked and turned to look at him. I, she swallowed and tried again, not sure what to say. It's the song. Liam turned the radio off. Better? She nodded and swallowed to get rid of the lump in her throat. It was my grandfather's favorite. Hmm. Liam nodded but didn't push for any details. He passed away three years ago on Christmas Eve. That couldn't have been easy. I'm guessing it makes this time of year hard for you, he asked softly. It does. I do my best to ignore it, but you know how it is. She shrugged. It's impossible. Those reminders are everywhere, aren't they? She was surprised how understanding he was. It gave her the strength to try to smile. It is. All right. New rule. No more Christmas music on this road trip, Liam said, turning the radio to a talk radio station. For the next few miles, they listened to a report on how food scientists engineer processed food to make it more appealing and addictive. Thank you, Paige said when there was a small commercial break. No problem. Liam nodded but kept his eyes on the road. Maybe this trip wouldn't be as bad as expected, after all. Chapter 6 I'm sorry about your grandfather. I had no idea. Faye never mentioned any of this. Liam felt bad about blasting Christmas music for the past 50 miles or more. Faye and Grandpa weren't as close, and she wasn't there when he passed. She was with friends in Cabo. Paige's voice cracked, and one quick glance confirmed that she was still on the verge of tears. Cabo, eh? I'm surprised they didn't do a destination wedding there, Liam said to distract her. You and me both. Paige smiled wryly. I have a question for you, he said, changing tactics. Shoot. She turned toward him, giving him her full attention. Liam cleared his throat, feeling the pressure. Do they still do this show and tell thing at school? Of course. Why, she asked. What was the strangest or funniest thing one of your students has brought in? Paige's lips twitched. A pair of dentures in a glass jar. You can't be serious. He was tempted to turn to stare at her, but traffic was bunching up ahead of them as two 18-wheelers, pulling two trailers each, were passing each other. Dead serious. He snuck them from his grandmother's nightstand. We had to call, and his mom came and picked them up. His grandmother had torn the house apart, looking for her teeth. Paige snickered. Liam was glad the distraction worked. I bet that made him king of the castle among his friends. No doubt about that. We thought it was the creepiest and coolest thing ever to look at my grandfather's dentures after he took them out for the night. One time, he popped them loose in his mouth, just to scare us. Did it work? Liam asked, his lips twitching up at the image of a young page and her sister running away screaming. Like a charm. She grew quiet after that, and he concentrated on the road ahead of him, slowly passing the two 18-wheelers. How about you? Any living grandparents? She asked a little while later. Liam shook his head. I only remember my grandmother on my mother's side. I have a great aunt, though. She's in Santa Fe. My parents moved out there to care for her. Are you too close? Paige asked. I barely know her. My Grammy though, that's a different story. She lived her entire life in Snellville, Georgia, and practically raised me. 
He couldn't help but smile, thinking about the tiny, feisty woman. Tell me about her, Paige said. If you want to. She was the best. Barely five feet tall, but you wouldn't know it. Made up for that lack of height with personality. Except when it came to reaching anything on the top shelf. And she could cook. And bake. Best biscuits you've ever had. His stomach grumbled at the thought of those melt-in-your-mouth biscuits that accompanied every single meal in the house. They were tender, flaky, and covered in melted butter. What he wouldn't give to eat one of those again. My grandma was like that. Slightly taller, but an amazing cook. She gave Miss Doris a run for her money. Grandma made good biscuits, but those buttermilk waffles. She cooked them in an old cast iron waffle iron you had to heat on the stove. Nothing like it. Paige looked as hungry as he felt and dug around her bag before handing him a small sandwich square that had a bit of jelly squirting out on one side. Thanks. I think my favorite memory of Grammy is making Christmas cookies. He popped the sandwich in his mouth. What kind of cookies? Paige asked, munching on her own mini sandwich. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. He realized he'd brought up Christmas again, without meaning to do it. She waved him off and motioned for him to continue. Cut out sugar cookies. I'm sure they were nothing special, but I remember kneeling on a chair, cracking eggs, and mixing the dough. She had a huge bag of copper cookie cutters in any shape you could imagine. By the time we were done, the entire kitchen table was filled with platters of cookies. That's a lovely memory to have. My grandpa loved this time of year, too. He'd drive all the way out to the North Carolina mountains to cut his favorite Christmas tree. He always said you couldn't grow anything good in our sandy soil and that a decent Christmas tree needed cold and snow. That had to be quite a drive, Liam said, wondering how the man had gotten the tree back all the way to the island. It was. Let's just say you didn't have to worry about loose needles, for a while, when he finally brought that thing into the house. And the man loved tinsel. Didn't matter how often we told him it was bad for the environment, to him, it wasn't a Christmas tree if it wasn't covered from crown to root in thin metal strips. She genuinely smiled, and it warmed his heart. My Grammy had this box of ornaments she collected over the decades. Nothing fancy, mostly things someone made for her, including some impressive gilded macaroni art from yours truly. He grinned and pointed at his chest. Gilded, eh, she asked with a raised eyebrow. Okay, I spray painted it gold, but you get the idea. I do. I make something like it with my kids each year. They love spray paint. Well, they love watching me use the can. There's no way I'm letting one of them lose with something so potentially destructive. She snickered, and he got the feeling a child had gotten a hold of one at one time or another. I thought you said you had them trained well. That only goes so far when you're dealing with five- and six-year-olds. I take your word for it. I'm not around a lot of small kids. Maybe that would change if Mateo and Faye had some down the road. No little nieces or nephews? Maybe some cousins, she asked. Liam shook his head. I come from a pretty small family. My dad's brother is a confirmed bachelor, and my mom's an only child. As am I. That is small. What made you come out to Palmer Island? Your folks aren't from around there, are they, she asked. Mateo, actually. He used to vacation there and kept talking about the place. When he moved out there and met Faye, he talked me into a visit and then into moving there myself. It's been good for business. It had been a surprisingly good move for him. I bet. We have quite a few wealthy people in and around the island, including most of the Sutton clan. Liam knew of the family of billionaires with roots on the island but didn't count any of them among his clients. From what he heard, they still did most of their business in Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, it's mostly upper-middle-class people, including your parents, that look for my type of services. Did you just violate some sort of client privilege? she asked. Probably. Forget I said anything, he said with a wink, 
sure her parents wouldn't mind he'd revealed that they were securing their financial future. Now what's wrong? Liam bit out when traffic came to a standstill again. Paige fumbled with her phone, swiping, pinching, and clicking. Looks like a 30-minute delay due to construction. I had no idea this was going on. Didn't you see this coming in? Of course not. I would have picked a different route if I did. Are you sure you didn't just mess it? You had to have come through. I didn't. I know where I drove. This is not part of the route from Santa Fe to Denver. Of course not. I wasn't thinking. Ignore what I said. Her voice was soothing as she bent down to dig around in the bag at her feet. I didn't mean to bark at you. Sorry about that. I'm getting tired of traffic. And a little worried about making it back to the island in time. He was feeling the pressure and the stress of being on the road for days was getting to him. Here. She held a banana out to him. It was bruised and brown and didn't look very appetizing. I'm fine, he said, ignoring his grumbling stomach, which was determined to prove him wrong. You need food. It'll make you feel better. She peeled the piece of fruit halfway and handed it to him. What about you? Liam kept both hands on the steering wheel. I'm not hungry. He shot her a quick glance. That's a lie. Paige snorted. Okay, maybe not the whole truth. But I'm nowhere near as hungry as you. How would you know, he asked, risking another glance since they'd almost come to a stop. I'm not hangry, she said, a wide grin spread across her face. It was infectious. Me neither. Right. Eat the banana, Liam. You'll feel better. Her tone was serious, if a little exasperated. Only if you split it with me. He may be hungry, but he had his pride. Chapter 7 Mind if I close my eyes for a little while? Paige asked when the road finally opened back up and they were back to full speed ahead. Go ahead. You won't miss much until we make it through Kansas. Liam's deadpan comment made her laugh, despite the throbbing in the back of her head. Hopefully, I won't nap that long. She took a couple of aspirins from the small bottle in her purse and popped them in her mouth, washing them down with the last of the coffee she'd fixed before they left. Feeling okay? Liam asked. Yeah, just a headache. Probably stress about work. Paige leaned her seat back an inch before it hit the bags in the back seat and closed her eyes. It'll work out, Liam said soothingly before lowering the volume of the talk radio show they'd settled on. It was nothing more than a bit of background noise that blended into the sound of the tires rolling and the engine humming. Thanks, she muttered, feeling sleep pulling her under. Maybe Liam wasn't such a bad guy, after all. A little grumpy, but the man did drive all the way across the country to pick her up. And he was considerate. Not all the time, but sometimes. Like right now. And the man was easy on the eyes. Paige fought the urge to peek at him and focused on relaxing her neck and shoulders. Yoga usually helped her deal with these stress headaches. But wasn't an option while you were hurling down the interstate at 80 miles an hour with a guy you barely knew behind the wheel. And relaxing was easier said than done. She must have dozed off, after all. The familiar ding of an incoming text message woke her. Hey there, sleepyhead. Feeling better? Liam asked when she raised up to check her phone. Actually, yes. Much better. How long was I asleep, she asked, hoping they'd made some serious progress. About twenty minutes or so, Liam said, his eyes twinkling with mirth. Paige wondered what had happened. She hoped she hadn't slept with her mouth open or snored. Her hand flew to her mouth, touching the corners to make sure she hadn't drooled. That would have been mortifying. They barely knew each other. To her relief, no drool was to be found. I should have packed some water, she said when she picked up her coffee and came up empty. We can get some at the gas station. I'm down to the last quarter. We'll hit the next one we pass, Liam said. 
Paige nodded. She could stand to stretch her legs. Her phone dinged again. Another text message. Paige expected it to be from one of her fellow teachers. Colleen was her best guess. To her surprise, the text was from her best friend in high school, Bonnie Walters. When will you be in town? Call me. Paige smiled, pleasantly surprised. Miss your pretty face. Let's do dinner. Or lunch. Mary's diner? Good news? Liam asked, keeping his eyes on the road. Barry. An old friend wants to hang out while I'm back home. Paige typed back a quick reply, letting Bonnie know she'd get in touch once in the next couple of days. Palmer Island is still home? Despite everything that happened? Liam asked. Of course. In a way, I think it will always be home. There's something special about that place. She felt a sudden longing to stand on the beach and dip her toes into the ocean water. That it is. Liam blew out a breath and ran his fingers through his hair. Paige wondered if he was as ready to get out of the car for a bit as she was. How about you? Do you like it, or are you sticking around because your clients are there? Paige asked, wondering where on the island he was staying and if he liked the beach in the wintertime as much as she did. I like it there. The people are nice, and you can't beat the weather. Except for the occasional hurricane, of course. He laughed. I know. I don't miss those one bit. Much rather deal with a snowstorm. They are less destructive, and I'd rather live without heat for a couple of days than without air conditioning in late summer in South Carolina. Those days are brutal. I lasted less than two. As soon as they had the roads open, I hightailed it out of there and went to a hotel inland with power and internet, Liam said. Which hurricane? Paige asked. The one last September. I forget the name. It didn't do too much damage, but some oak trees fell in the wrong spot, and it took them ages to get the power back on to the south end of the island. Liam shook his head. Of course it came on as soon as I checked into my hotel room. Isn't that the way it always goes? Paige said. She remembered hearing about the storm, but it hadn't done much damage to her parents' property. It is. I was looking at ocean front property before it hit. Not anymore, she asked. I'm good where I'm at now. Smack dab in the middle of the island, surrounded by sturdy-looking trees. Paige had a general idea of the area he was talking about. She was dying to know where exactly he lived, if it was a house or a condo, and if he rented or owned it. It would tell her a lot about how deep his roots on the island were. Not that it mattered. A few days from now, they'd say their goodbyes. Probably at the end of her sister's wedding reception, and they'd go their separate ways. She stayed quiet as they got closer to the exit that promised a small reprieve from the long drive. Ready to get back on the road? Liam asked. Almost. Paige was crawling through the back, looking for her hoodie. It would come in handy as the sun set and it was getting darker and would hopefully help her get a little more sleep than the twenty-minute nap earlier. What are you doing back there? Liam asked, peeking his head in behind her. Rearranging. If I can get the passenger seat to lie down farther, we might have a chance to catch a little sleep tonight. I figure we can take turns driving and napping. She backed out and bumped into his solid chest, trying to exit the car. Sorry. Liam cleared his throat. That's a good idea. What can I do? Lay the seat back, she said, keeping an eye on the bags behind it. Easier said than done. Liam reached across the tote bag she'd tossed in the front seat. She'd have to find room for it back here somewhere once they'd made the adjustments. Sorry. I had to put stuff somewhere. Hang on, something back here is holding it back. Paige dug around and pulled her makeup bag out from between the two others. Maybe she had overpacked a little. Try again. This time, the seat moved as far back as it would go. Plenty level for a quick snooze as they made their way across Kansas. Great. Let's get going. 
Liam jogged around the car and opened the driver's door. Paige found a new spot for her bag and shut the back door. Water. I forgot to grab the bottled water. I'll be right back. She tossed her hoodie on the seat, grabbed her purse, and dashed off to the convenience store. Hurry up. I'll clean the windshield. And grab me a Snickers, would you? Liam called after her. Paige raised her hand in acknowledgement and pulled open the door of the store. It didn't take long to find a couple of water bottles and two king-sized candy bars. How'd this happen, she muttered under her breath when she went to pay for the snacks and saw the line of five people in front of her. I know, right? A young woman, not much taller than her in a gray hoodie, turned around and smiled. They chatted for a couple of minutes until it was time for her to pay. Paige glanced out the glass door. Liam was finishing up cleaning the windshield. He returned the squeegee and pulled a couple of paper towels from the dispenser to clean his hands. Paige lost sight of him when the young woman left the store, and she stepped up to pay. That'll be $7.53, the cashier said. Paige dug around in her purse until she found her debit card and pushed it in. Did you have gas as well? The middle-aged man, who didn't look like he wanted to be there, asked. I'm not sure. I think Liam paid at the pump. It hadn't occurred to her that he'd expect her to pay for gas, but it made sense. Which pump? The man asked. Paige looked outside, then back at him. It's the Subaru out there. She hoped he wouldn't ask what model it was. She was glad she'd recognized the logo. That's pump six, and it's paid for. Tell your boyfriend to move it so someone else can get gas, the man muttered, handing her the receipt. Paige shoved her card and the receipt into her purse and collected her items. She pushed the door open with her shoulder and stepped outside in time to watch Liam pull out of the gas station and onto the busy highway. Chapter 8 did you get everything you wanted? Liam asked as he pulled out of the gas station. He glanced over at Paige. She'd covered herself with her hoodie. Except the hoodie wasn't moving, and there were no sounds coming from the passenger seat. Shoot. A rush of adrenaline hit Liam the moment he realized what he'd done. That wasn't Paige in the passenger seat beside him. It was her hoodie draped over one of the many bags that women traveled with. He took the next right turn and hightailed it back to the gas station where Paige was waiting, holding an armful of snacks and water. You took off without me? Paige ripped the door open and threw a bottle of water at him. Liam caught it. Not on purpose. I thought you were in the car. How? She climbed in, tossed the bag in the back, and pulled her hoodie on. Your hoodie was laying over the bag and, he stopped when he realized how ridiculous it sounded. Paige raised an eyebrow. I know it's no excuse, but I saw you walking to the car when I cleaned the window. Then this guy in a jeep truck pulled up behind me and honked, trying to get to the pump. I jumped in the car, thought I saw you in the seat, and took off. Liam shrugged. He felt bad, but what could he do? What had happened had happened no matter how much he wished for a do-over. Right. Paige's lips formed a line. She sat in the passenger seat, arms crossed across her chest. Is there anything else you need before we get back on the road? He asked. She was quiet for a moment, her eyes closed and her lips moving like she was counting or something. He waited, taking small breaths as he stared out the windshield at the gas station in front of him. Finally, he heard her take a deep breath and felt more than saw her turn toward him. How about I drive? What? I should drive for a while. We've been on the road for hours. You've got to be tired. Are you sure? He asked, looking at her to make sure she was serious about this. Absolutely. It's the only excuse I can come up with. You have to be deliriously tired to mistake me for my sweatshirt. Maybe you have a point. He was exhausted. His eyes burned, and he obviously wasn't thinking clearly. It's only fair. Plus, I don't want you to drive us off the road or drive the wrong way on the interstate or something. She smiled, but it felt forced to him. 
all right. He cut the engine and unbuckled. Liam had a hand on the door, but didn't move. Be careful. She's no spring chicken. Paige smiled. I've been driving for a while. And all we're doing is driving straight on the interstate for hundreds of miles. I think I'll be all right. She left the car. Liam reluctantly got out and handed her the keys. He loved this car. It was his baby. His first major purchase, and he'd worked long and hard to make those payments. The clutch is a little touchy. Let it out slow until you get a feel for it, he said when he got into the passenger seat and buckled. Okie dokie. Here we go. Paige cranked the engine, and the car shot forward. Luckily, there wasn't anyone or anything in front of them. She slammed on the brakes. What happened, she asked the moment he yelled, what are you doing? Liam took a deep breath. You need to push on the brake and let out the clutch, easy. Make sure you're in first. Paige nodded, her hand still gripping the steering wheel so tight her knuckles were turning white. You know how to drive a stick, right? he asked, already knowing the answer to the question. It's been a while. She rolled her neck and moved her lips. Going through the motions in her mind, he guessed. Go again. Easy and don't let off the brake too soon. He grabbed the handle of the door, bracing himself against the back of the seat, ready for another jerk move. He silently apologized to the car for what he had gotten them into and gritted his teeth. I can do this, Paige said, and he wished she sounded a little more convincing. It took some stuttering and the grinding gear noise she made when shifting made him clench his jaw. He was about to ask her to stop so he could take over when she got the hang of it and pulled out onto the highway. Shift into second, he reminded her. Got it. Now'd be good for third. He was holding on so hard, his hands hurt. I've got it. Paige sounded like she was clenching her teeth as hard as he was. How had the woman gotten around Denver for the past three years? This was worse than that time he'd tried to teach his neighbor's daughter to drive. The on-ramp is coming up on your left, he said, pointing to the turn in question. I can see that. Relax. He did once they were on the interstate. She'd come up to full speed and was in sixth gear. This isn't so bad. It's been a while since I drove a stick. My grandpa taught me, she said, looking and sounding much more relaxed. No kidding. He wanted to add something about her teacher, but his own grandmother had taught him not to speak ill of the dead. Don't worry, I can feel it coming back. Relax. Maybe take a nap. She was cruising, one hand on the wheel, keeping her eyes on the road in front of them. They were out on the eastern end of Colorado. Couldn't be too much farther until they moved into Kansas. Easy driving, but there was no way he'd be able to relax anytime soon, no matter how tired he was. His phone rang. It's Mateo, he said before answering. Please tell me you're on the road, his best friend said. We are. We hit some construction outside of Denver, but we're making good time now. How about you? Everything going okay with the wedding? Liam asked, trying to ignore Paige, who was mouthing something he couldn't make out. Aside from everyone driving me nuts, because they are worried you won't make it back in time. Yeah, I'm peachy. Now I know what the purpose of a honeymoon is. You need a vacation after all this wedding stuff. Liam laughed. It sounded worse than he'd imagined. Why anyone would want a big wedding was beyond him. Find a pretty spot, get a preacher, say some words, and then go out to a nice dinner. He knew better than to mention any of this to Mateo. We'll make it. Another twenty hours of driving time and we're there. Don't worry. And tell Faye not to worry, either. I'll have her maid of honor there in plenty of time for the rehearsal dinner, Liam said. As long as you stay ahead of the storm, you'll be okay. Keep an eye on it, though. It's moving fast, and they're saying it's going to be bad. A storm? What storm? Paige asked, picking up on the conversation. We haven't heard anything about it. 
what exactly is going on? Liam asked. Don't you guys listen to the radio? It's all they are talking about. Something about this being the blizzard of the century. It's burying Denver right now. They forecast power outages and are worried about the grid holding up. Whatever you've got to do, stay ahead of it. Liam promised Mateo they would and ended the call. He caught Paige up on what he'd heard while checking his phone for more information. This looks bad. What do you want to do? Hunker down and wait it out, she asked. Liam shook his head. We'll never make it in time if we do that, and I don't think we can outrun it completely. There's a southern route I took to Santa Fe. I'm hoping if we take it, we'll avoid the worst of it. As long as we keep driving, keeping brakes to a minimum, we may be able to stay ahead of this thing. You don't sound very convinced, she said. I'm not. It's moving fast. Page inched their speed up, pushing the speed limit more than he was usually comfortable with. How do we get onto the southern route, she asked. Working on it. Pull over at the next rest stop, and we'll go over the route and get it mapped out on both our phones, Liam said, looking at options on Google Maps. She'd driven for less than an hour by the time they made it to the rest area, but he was ready to switch back. There was no way he was sleeping after all this, so he might as well take the wheel and push his car as far as he could to keep them in front of the snowstorm. Chapter 9 The stop at the rest area was too short. Paige barely had a chance to stretch her legs and use the restroom before Liam was ready to get back on the road. Take a look at this route. He shoved his phone in her face while she was buckling her seatbelt. Looks good to me. It's adding quite a bit of time, though. She copied it into her own phone in case they switched or there was an issue. The way things were going so far on this trip, it wouldn't hurt to play it safe. We can make that up. Liam sounded more confident than he looked. Let me guess? Fewer breaks? Paige asked. Pretty much. And stepping on it. Let's hope everyone's too busy prepping for the storm to check our speed. He pulled out of the rest stop and was on the interstate when her phone rang. Faye, is everything okay? Paige hadn't heard from her sister in days. Once the bride had been assured her maid of honor was going to make it in time, she'd stopped calling and texting. Paige was sure Faye had a million other things to do before the big day. Checking in to see how you and Liam are getting along. Faye sounded chipper and more relaxed than the last time they'd spoken. We're doing fine. Making good time. We should be there with plenty of time to spare before the rehearsal dinner. No need to worry her about getting stuck in a blizzard. Good. You better. There's no way I'm doing this without you. What do you think about Liam? He's kinda cute, right? Paige groaned. Faye couldn't possibly be using this as a way to try to set her up. Sure. Oops, forgot that you two are in the car together. Make me the best of it, and we'll talk when you get there. Gotta run. See you soon. Faye hung up, leaving Paige to shake her head at her little sister's antics. What was that about? Liam asked, passing another 18-wheeler pulling three trailers full of who knew what. Faye checking in to make sure I'm on my way and that we'll make it in time. She likes to micromanage, doesn't she? Liam asked. That she does. It was one of her least favorite attributes of her sister. She didn't know what else to say, and they both stayed quiet for the next few miles. So, you think I'm cute? Liam said out of nowhere. What? He couldn't possibly have heard that. Paige felt the heat rising in her neck and cheeks. She pulled on the collar of her hoodie, feeling the car closing in on her. Faye asked if I was kind of cute, and you said sure. Unless I heard wrong. Liam's lip twitched. You heard wrong, Paige said and tried to get out of the hoodie. When did it become so tight? It felt like the thing had shrunk two sizes in the last five minutes. Everything okay? Liam asked when she finally re-emerged from her struggle to get out of the shirt while staying buckled. I'm fine. 
you're not. What's wrong? You look like you're about to crawl out of your skin. Paige barked out a laugh. That was exactly what it had felt like to take off the hoodie. I have a hard time with confined spaces. Like planes, he asked. Yes. And closets. And cars. Her anxiety was going through the roof. Maybe it was time to consider medication. Paige took a few shallow breaths and scrubbed her face with both hands. Have you tried meditation? You know, to help you calm down your nervous system when stuff like this happens? There was no judgment in his voice. Only concern. I have. It helps. Yoga does too. She tried to remember the breathing exercises she'd found helpful in the past, but her mind was too scattered. Why don't you try some of that now, he asked. I'd need a little more space than this for yoga, and I thought the plan was to stop as little as possible. The thought of going through poses on yet another rest area in the dark made her skin crawl, and her anxiety shot up even further. Meditation works for me. Close your eyes, relax, and go through your favorite techniques. Liam waved his hand in front of him. Like it was that easy. I don't think I can do that. Not with him right next to her. He couldn't possibly be expecting her to clear her mind while they were hurling down the interstate at 80 miles an hour. Use a meditation app and put on some headphones. I'll keep my mouth shut. Liam reached over and turned off the radio they'd turned on for news about the weather. I'm fine. She tried to slow down her breathing. Wasn't there some technique called box breathing? Paige wished she'd remembered how to do it and reached for her phone to search it. Download an app and take these. Liam pulled a pair of headphones out of the center console and handed them to her. Paige took them, their fingers brushing against each other for a fraction of a section. Paige sucked in a sharp breath and pulled hers into her lap. Thank you. Her hands were shaking as she fumbled with her phone to maneuver to the app store. Any recommendations for meditation apps? He named several of them, and she picked the first one. The download was agonizingly slow out here in the middle of nowhere, but eventually it finished. I'll give this a try. Liam nodded and Paige closed her eyes and lost herself in the 15-minute guided meditation. She focused on an imagined candle flame, feeling its warmth. With the slow flicker of the light, her heartbeat slowed, and she felt herself relax into the car seat. Better? Liam asked when she finally opened her eyes. Tons. Paige smiled and pulled the headphones out of her ears when a loud noise and the car slowing down enough to jerk her into the seat belt pulled her out of her newfound state of zen. What happened, she asked. Liam's eyebrows were knit together. He put on the hazard lights and pulled over on the side of the interstate. We blew a tire, he said when the car came to a complete stop. This thing is a nightmare. Liam dropped his side of her large suitcase and turned to disappear into the trunk again. It's a little big. I didn't realize it was going to be such a tight fit. Paige wondered if she did overpack a little and wrapped her arms around herself. It's getting cold. No kidding. There's a storm chasing us down. Liam reappeared and handed her a metal cross-looking contraption. What's this, she asked, using her sleeves to hold the thing. You're kidding, right? Please tell me you know how to change a tire, he said. At least that's what she thought was coming out of his mouth. It was hard to tell with his entire upper body stuck in the trunk again. He was fiddling with some flap, and who knew what else? There was knocking, bumping, and a few muttered curses. I do. In theory. She stepped back when he reappeared, dragging a tire that matched the four on the road from the depths of the trunk. You've never actually changed one? Your dad never made you, he asked, eyebrows raised. No. He talked me through it, but I've never had to actually change one or see the change performed. Unless she counted the vague scenes in movies and on TV shows. All right. No better time than the present. Come over here. 
He grabbed the jack and motioned for her to crouch down alongside him. Use your phone to give us a little more light. The moon was full, providing quite a bit of illumination in addition to the headlights he'd left on, but neither did much to light up the underside of the car. She did as asked, and he positioned the jack to lift the car enough to change the rear tire on the passenger side. Grab the tire iron and get over here. He moved to the side to give her room to join him. Here you go. Paige tried to hand it to him. Liam shook his head. You're not gonna learn until you do some of this yourself. He proceeded to talk her through using a tire iron. Are you sure we have time for this? Paige asked. She struggled to get the lug nut loose. Probably not. You do one. I'll do the rest. He stayed patient, helping her bump it free, then watched her slowly spin the iron often enough to be able to remove the nut. You're kidding me. This is amazing. She stayed crouched down, far enough out of the way to watch him work. He had the tire loose in less time than it had taken her to do one nut. Lots of practice, he said, leaning the flat tire against the side of the car and reaching for the spare. Is this going to slow us down? Driving on a spare? Paige asked while he fastened it. It shouldn't. It's a full spare. We won't have to slow down, and it should take us all the way to Palmer Island. I'll get it replaced after the holidays. Oh, good. Paige rose and felt something cold land on her cheek. She held out her hand, and a couple of thick snowflakes landed on it. They melted almost immediately, only to be replaced by more. It's snowing. I noticed. Almost done here. Let's pack up and get back on the road. Do you think we can stay ahead of this? Paige asked, a knot forming in her stomach. I hope so. Liam threw the tire in the trunk, and together, they put back her luggage. The suitcase looked like it had been covered in powdered sugar. At least the road was still clear when they got back into the car. The snow came down thick and heavy, and Paige couldn't shake the feeling they were in deep trouble. Chapter 10 This isn't looking good. It was all he could do to keep the car on the road. The accumulating snow made it slippery, and his tires weren't made to handle snow. We should stop, Paige said, her voice tinged with concern. Or was it fear? She hadn't let go of the side of her seat for the past hour. We can't. We'll never make it if we stop. I really thought we could avoid the worst of it by heading south. It had been a mistake. There was no way it was worse than this on I-70. You can't see more than a few yards ahead of you, and we're barely crawling. I don't think stopping for a few hours and waiting for the worst to pass is going to cost us that much time. It's got to stop soon. Can you check the radar again? He asked, gripping the steering wheel tighter and doing his best to stay on the road. Looks like it's even worse farther north. They closed a big chunk of I-70. Good thing we decided to head south. Paige pulled her hair back into a high ponytail and picked her phone back up. What's the word around here? Liam was afraid to ask, but it was better to know than to get surprised by more snow. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. Radar looks bad. We have a lot more accumulation coming our way. At least it's moving pretty fast. Paige held up her phone, and he saw the icy blue cloud cover a big area of the screen. Liam returned his eyes to the snow-covered road in front of him. That's not necessarily a good thing. He turned the wheel when he realized he was moving out of the tracks the few cars in front of them had made. The car slid, and Paige squealed. We're okay. It's the tires. He shoved his hair back and grabbed the steering wheel tighter. Did we blow another one? Paige asked, her voice high and shrill. No. They're not made for these conditions. And from the looks of it, it was only going to get worse as the night went on. We need to stop somewhere and wait this out, Paige said a few minutes later. I think you're right. Let's hope there's an exit coming up soon. And that there would be some place for them to stay. It was almost Christmas, and aside from this blizzard, everywhere they'd been so far had been busy. 
Let me see what I can figure out. Maybe I can book us something online. Paige got back on her phone while he did what he could to keep them on the road that was quickly disappearing under a thick layer of snow. Is this going to work? Liam asked when he dropped his overnight bag on the double bed in front of them. It's going to have to. Only room available in the only motel for miles. You'd think there'd be more to choose from. Paige shook her head and dropped her own bags on the floor next to the bed. I should call Mateo and let him know what's going on, Liam said. Unless you'd rather talk to your sister first. Oh no. You go right ahead and break the bad news. I need a shower. Do you mind? She pointed to the small bathroom. Go right ahead. Liam pulled the chair around to look at the obligatory hunting scene print on the wall and called his best friend. How are things going? Mateo asked, picking up on the first ring. Not great. We had to stop for the night. Too much snow on the road. I was afraid of that. What's the plan? How far did you get? Wait for the snow to stop and get back on the road. We're outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. Which meant they were still a long way from home. I'm guessing there's no way you'll make the rehearsal dinner, Mateo said. Faye was talking in the background, but her voice was too faint for Liam to make out what she was saying. We'll try, but I seriously doubt it. No clue how fast they'll clear the roads around here. At least we're right off the interstate, and I'm guessing they'll plow that first. He was surprised they weren't doing that all along to keep the snow from accumulating. But this was the south. Probably not a lot of snow plows available. We'll make it work. Get here as soon as you can safely. I'll catch you both up when you do. How's Paige holding up? Mateo asked. She's fine. A little freaked out when we started sliding around. And we're both tired and hungry. She's in the shower right now. What? How do you know? Mateo asked. We're sharing a room. It was the only one available in a 60-mile radius, Liam said. He was a grown man and shouldn't have to explain himself. Liam, please tell me you're not. Of course not. Who do you think I am? He'd had a bit of a reputation in college, but that had been a long time. Well, nothing is going on between Paige and me, and nothing will. We barely know each other. We're going to hunker down in this crappy motel room until the worst of the storm is over, and then we're getting back on the road. You have my word. All right. I trust you, Liam, but she's my future sister in law. You understand. Of course. Liam shook his head. He didn't think of Paige that way. Sure, she was attractive, and there had been a spark when their hands touched earlier in the car. And yes, she was kind and sweet and had packed them food that they'd unfortunately run out of. But she was also annoying and a bad backseat driver. Most importantly, she was not his type. She was a kindergarten teacher, for crying out loud. Stay safe and tell Paige we said hi. Mateo ended the call, just as Faye was saying something. Liam hoped she wouldn't call back. He leaned back in the chair and closed his eyes, clearing his mind to the sound of the shower running in the bathroom and doing his best to ignore the fact that it was Paige in there. Did you reach anyone back home? Paige asked a few minutes later. Liam sat up and fought the urge to turn around. I did. I talked to Mateo. They're fine. He asked us to be safe and get there when we can. He caught her up on the plans for the skipped rehearsal dinner. Good. I'm sure Faye is freaking out. I'll text her in a bit. You can turn around, by the way. I'm fully dressed. He did and sucked in a breath. She looked adorable standing there in a long t-shirt, jeans, and bare feet. She was toweling off her hair, and her face looked young and fresh with all remnants of makeup washed away. You look nice, he said before he could help himself. I'm a hot mess, but thanks. The shower made me feel better. You should grab one. She tossed the towel on the bed and shook her hair, 
tousling it with her fingers. The scent of ginger, cucumber, and something floral was thick in the air. He assumed it was from the complimentary shampoo. Liam swallowed hard and took an involuntary step in her direction. Maybe later. Hmm, Paige's eyes were fixed on him, pulling him in. Her breath came fast. Liam found himself mere inches away from her before he realized he'd closed the short distance between them. He touched a strand of her damp hair, unable to resist the urge to touch it, experiencing what it felt like. It was smooth and silky. Paige's breath washed over him like a sweet wave, leaving a hint of mint behind. She raised on her toes. Liam couldn't take his eyes off her soft pink lips. He lowered his head and saw her eyelids flutter and then shut, waiting for him to make the next move. He almost did. He wasn't sure he could stop himself. But he'd made Mateo a promise. Clearing his throat, he brushed her cheeks with the back of his fingers and stepped back, creating some much-needed distance between them. Paige's eyes flew open, surprise, disappointment, and a tinge of rejection reflecting back at him. Liam? I should try to see if I can dig up some food somewhere. He grabbed his coat and headed outside. The fresh air felt nice after the heat and humidity in the room. Because that was the only reason he felt flushed. It had nothing to do with the young woman standing in the middle of the room, bare feet and wet hair. The one he was supposed to share a bed with, without sharing a bed. How had he gotten himself into this mess? He walked past the cheap Christmas decorations that were strung up along the outside of the row of rooms. Soft Christmas music played somewhere a few doors down. He heard it again when he returned with his meager offerings. This time he could hear children singing along with the song, and he wondered who the family was, stuck here with them in a motel off I-40. That thought grounded him. Much better than replaying the scene of what happened and what had almost happened earlier over and over again in his mind. Paige sat on the bed with her eyes closed, earbuds in her ears, when he returned. Her eyes flew open when the cold air, from the open door, hit her. You're back. I am. And I come bearing gifts. Liam dumped the tiny bags of chips and cookies he found, along with packs of crackers and candy bars. That's it? Paige looked up at him, then back down at the food. We're in the middle of a snowstorm. Everything is closed. I was happy the vending machines weren't completely raided yet. He knew she wasn't talking about the food, but what was he supposed to do here? He'd made a promise, and it would take every single ounce of willpower he possessed to make it through the night without kissing the woman sitting in front of him. There's got to be some actual food around here somewhere. Paige got up and pulled on a pair of thick wool socks. Trust me, there isn't. Right. There are a lot of things that aren't available around here. What was that? Earlier? She stood in front of him, hands on her hips, fiery eyes aimed at him. What do you want from me? Liam asked, crossing his arms in front of him. I want to know why you almost kissed me and then decided to walk away. I'm pretty sure I don't have bad breath, so I ask you again. What was that? Nothing. Liam turned and sat in the chair at the desk, turning his back to her. He could feel the passion rolling off her. If he kept looking at her, he'd throw caution and promises to the wind, pull her into his arms, and kiss her until they were both breathless. Every nerve in his body told him to do it. Only his conscience was holding on and barely by a thread. Right. Nothing at all. Paige stepped back into her boots and pulled her damp hair into a ponytail. Paige, be reasonable. We're stuck in a room in a blizzard on the way to your sister's wedding. He could hear the pleading in his tone and hated how it made him sound. Reasonable? You have got to be kidding me. I've been nothing but reasonable this entire trip. She put her jacket on and pulled the hood over her head. Where are you going? he asked, dumbfounded by the expression on her face. It was a mix of anger, disappointment, and something else he couldn't make out. Out. I need some air. Don't wait up. Paige stormed out the door, slamming it shut behind her. 
Liam stood there as if rooted into the ground, trying to figure out how things had spiraled out of control so fast. Chapter 11 Unbelievable, Paige muttered to herself. How could Liam do this to her? He'd looked at her with those smoldering eyes of his, pulled her in, and came this close to kissing her. And then he'd turned and walked away. Like it was nothing. It was bad enough that Faye was getting married on Christmas Eve and made her drive all the way across the country, and through a blizzard, to attend. She didn't need this, whatever this was, from Liam. The rejection hurt. Almost as much as the cold. The air was frosty, and the snow came down fast. Paige looked around. She needed to get away. Create some distance between herself and Liam. Not only had they been stuck in the car together all day, now they had to share a room, and he was rejecting her. She had wanted to kiss him. She'd stood there like a fool with her eyes closed, waiting for his lips to touch hers. Paige wrapped her jacket around herself, pulled the hood over her eyes, and took off away from the room and the busy road. Paige was stomping through the snow toward the woods behind the motel when the phone in her pocket rang. Her mother. Paige turned the sound off and shoved the phone in her pocket. She kept walking, half running away from the hotel, the room, and the man who made her cheeks burn with embarrassment. She felt the phone vibrate in her pocket and ignored it. Who does he think he is? When the phone went off a third time, Paige huffed. Her mother wasn't one to give up easily. Mom, this isn't a good time, she said, a little harsher than she meant to when she dug her phone out of her pocket and pressed the green button to answer. Paige, I know you're in a rush, but you can take a few minutes to talk to your mother. It's not like you're driving, her mother said. I'm not. We're stuck. Paige let out a slow breath, a large cloud forming as the warm, humid air left her lungs. So I heard. Tell me about this snow. Are you sure you can't keep going? From what I can tell, it will let up once you get a little further east. Her mother used the tone that meant there was no getting out of this conversation. Paige looked at the thick snow falling around her and barked out a sad excuse for a laugh. No, Mom. We can't keep going. We're stuck until the worst is over. I talked to your sister, and she's upset. She's been planning this wedding for ages, and it was so kind of her to ask you to be her maid of honor. Paige bit her tongue, trying as hard as she could to keep from telling her mother off. I'm sorry, this is adding to your stress about the wedding. Are you sure you can't make it in time for the rehearsal dinner? Her mother asked. We'll try, but it isn't looking good. It all depends on when it stops snowing or when they get a plow out here. It's bad, Mom. We were slipping and sliding all over the place, going less than 15 miles an hour. Stopping for the night had been the right thing to do. Even if it meant spending more time with Liam. It's that bad? Her mom's tone changed, sounding actually concerned instead of mildly annoyed. Yes. I've rarely seen it snow this hard in Denver. And they aren't equipped to deal with it around here. I promise we'll get there as soon as we possibly can. Because a wedding without the maid of honor and the best man would be a challenge. But whose idea had it been to send the best man out for her? Not Paige's. I don't know how we're going to get through these next few days in one piece. Her mother's voice broke, and Paige realized that despite all outward appearances, this couldn't be easy for her mother. She had lost her grandfather, but her mother had lost her dad. Try not to worry, Mom. It'll all work out. And who knows? Maybe the snow will make it all the way down to Palmer Island, and we'll get a white Christmas. Wouldn't that be something? I won't stop worrying until you're here, safe and sound. Be careful and call me when you're back on the road, her mother added before taking her leave. The snow wasn't as thick in the woods, and she was sheltered from the wind. Paige kept walking along what she thought was a path until she felt calmer. She unzipped the top of her jacket and pushed back her hood. She was working up a sweat. She slowed down and took a few deliberate breaths. The memory of the kiss she'd almost shared with Liam kept playing in her head. She wanted him to kiss her and had thought he felt the same way. 
until he changed his mind. It was hurtful and embarrassing, yes. But if she were honest with herself, it wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't like she had to spend the rest of her life around the man. All she had to do was make it through tonight, the rest of the drive, and the wedding, of course. Paige ran the numbers in her head. 72 hours and she'd be rid of him. She was a grown woman. She could do this. Be civil, for her sister's sake. Make it through the wedding and then find a way to go back home to Colorado to teach second grade. Paige sighed. Being a responsible adult was overrated. Why in the world had she and her sister been so anxious to grow up and leave the comfortable home they'd had with their parents? It was getting colder, and her damp hair didn't help. Despite the warm jacket and the hood, she began to freeze, and it got worse when she slowed down to figure out where she was and where she was going. It was dark in the woods, her phone was the only illumination. One glance at the low battery indicator made her stop in her tracks. This was stupid. And dangerous. Paige turned around and retraced her steps until she lost track of the faint imprints of her boots in the snow cover. There was no sign of the motel. No light coming from anywhere but the screen of her phone. Tired, defeated, and suddenly no longer angry at Liam, her sister, or anyone else, she sat down on a tree trunk to regroup and admit to herself that she was lost. She raised her phone to call Liam for help when the battery died completely, leaving her in the dark and all alone. Chapter 12 She'd been gone for a good 30 minutes. Liam's eyes kept wandering back to the alarm clock on the nightstand. Five more minutes and he'd go after her. He kept listening for any sound of stomping boots or the click of the keycard. But all he heard was the occasional slammed door and a couple chatting on their way to the vending machines at the end of their row of rooms. I can't believe I've got to go chase her down in this weather, he said to the emptiness of the room. He wasn't equipped for a walk out in the snow, let alone a blizzard rescue mission. He'd worn his sneakers on the trip, and, unlike Paige, he didn't have a thick winter jacket. His coat worked fine for the mild Palmer Island winters, but it wasn't designed for a day out in the snow. Liam laced up his shoes, shrugged into his jacket, and grabbed the flashlight the motel owner had given them before heading out the door to look for her. He'd expected to find her at one of the picnic tables out back. He'd spotted them when he'd gone out to search for food. They were empty, with no sign of her. He shook his head and tried calling her again. Still no answer. The phone went straight to voicemail. He'd hoped she'd come to her senses and turned it back on, but no such luck. Paige, he called out into the darkness, thick flakes of snow dancing around him in the light of the lamps that lined the parking lot. He looked around, considering where she may have run off to. The snow was too heavy to see tracks. He took a few steps to the right and called out for her. On a whim, he walked to the left, past the picnic tables, toward the woods that stretched out who knew how far behind the building. Liam called her name every minute or two as he walked along the side of the forest. Nothing. He stomped his feet and wrapped his arms around himself to keep off the wet cold from creeping in any more than it already had. He was chilled to the bone and could only imagine how bad a shape Paige was in. She'd been out in this weather a good forty minutes longer than he had been. Mateo would never forgive him if he'd let her catch a cold out here, or worse. But that wasn't the only thing that kept him going, shouting her name as he made his way back to the path that had led him back here. He was worried about her. Over the twenty-odd hours they'd known each other, Paige had grown on him. He admired her dedication to her job and her love for her grandfather. And all things considered, he didn't really blame her for trying to get out of a wedding that brought back so many painful memories. The flashlight flickered and went out. Liam uttered a word he wouldn't use around company and banged it against his hand. He let out a sigh of relief when it came back on after several tries. He retraced his steps until he reached a fork in the path. Something he'd thought was nothing more than a deer track led straight into the woods. Of course, that would have been the path she'd chosen. Liam shook his head and stomped off into the woods, 
calling her name and saying a silent prayer that he could find her in time. Paige, where the heck are you? Liam kept up the shouting. His voice was cracking, and he wasn't sure how much longer he could keep this up. Maybe it was time to make his way back to the motel and try to get some help. He wondered if the police would put together a search party for someone who'd been missing for less than two hours. Or if they'd even be able to come out in this weather. Paige, he yelled one last time, listening carefully as he turned to head back, the way he'd come. Over here. The sound was soft, coming from deeper in the woods. Liam continued in the direction he'd been headed in, walking a few more yards before calling her name again. There was no more path to speak of. He was weaving in and out of trees and underbrush as he made his way farther away from the motel and toward the direction her voice was coming from. Paige, where are you? Over here. I can see your flashlight, she called. This time, the response was louder. Seconds later, he saw her behind a large oak. She was sitting half-covered in snow on a fallen log. Liam. She looked so happy to see him. It took his breath away. Until he noticed how badly she was shivering and that she wasn't getting up or walking toward him. What's wrong? He was by her side before she got a chance to reply. I twisted my ankle. I'm not sure if it's broken. It hurts to put weight on it. Her entire body was shivering. Let's get you up on your feet. Liam held both hands out to her and pulled her up, resisting the urge to pull her in his arms and carry her off. Can you put any weight on it? Paige lowered the foot she'd kept raised an inch or two above the snow-covered ground and cautiously set it down on the forest floor. Liam felt her weight shift and watched her face carefully. The area around her nose was pale, almost white. Her lips were pressed into a thin line. How's the pain, he asked, carefully moving around her to put an arm around her waist and help take most of the weight off the foot. Not as bad as it was a little while ago. It hurts, but I can put a little weight on it. Liam took in a small breath, feeling some relief. How did it happen? I wasn't paying attention to where I was going and slipped on a snow-covered rock. I twisted my ankle and had a heck of a time making it to that log. She shook her head, then focused all her attention on taking one cautious step after another. They walked quietly, him fighting the brush on the narrow path until it began to widen as they came closer to the motel. It still wasn't visible, but the snow was slowing down and his footsteps were still visible in the beam of the flashlight. Thank you for coming after me, Paige said when they made it to the fork in the path. He steered her in the direction of the motel. Of course. Sorry, it took me so long. I looked down there first. He pointed the flashlight to the edge of the woods he'd been walking 15 minutes earlier. It was slow going, but the farther they walked, the better Paige seemed to be able to use her foot. That had to be a good sign. You couldn't walk on a broken foot or ankle, could you? Is that the motel? Paige asked, sounding surprised. It is. We're almost there. How are you doing? He held on to her, taking most of her weight. It was easier now that the path was wider. I think it's getting better. Either that, or I'm losing feeling in my feet. The wry smile on her face almost broke his heart. Let's hope it's nothing more than a twisted ankle. My mom used to roll hers all the time. She'd stay off it for a day or two, and it would be as good as new. I don't think that's going to be an option when you're supposed to walk down the aisle and dance at a wedding in 48 hours. Paige hobbled alongside him, both of them picking up speed now that they could see the welcoming light of the building up ahead of them. We'll find you a chair to roll around in if we have to, Liam said, biting back a grin at the thought of her being rolled around in an office chair. I am not attending the wedding in a wheelchair and don't even think about suggesting crutches. They do not go with my outfit. Paige huffed, but he was relieved to see some of her spark come back. She'd been awfully quiet up until now. First of all, I was thinking of one of those rolling office chairs, so I can spin you around on the dance floor, he said. Paige laughed. And secondly? 
they were almost at the door to their room. There's time for it to heal. If there's nothing sprained or broken, there's a good chance you'll be fine for the wedding. You might not be able to dance the night away, but you should be able to get around. He stopped next to their door and reached for the key card in his back pocket. Let's hope so. And let's hope I won't break anything wearing whatever shoes Helen picked out for me to go with the dress. And that they fit in the first place. Paige shook her head and hobbled into the room, flopping down on the chair Liam steered her toward. I'm sure you'll look beautiful. Let's take a look. He shut the door behind them and cranked up the heat before kneeling down in front of her to untie her boot. I can do it, she said, leaning forward and trying to push him off. Okay. Liam rose and pulled his coat off, hanging it across the back of the second chair. He brushed melting snowflakes out of his hair and warmed his hands on the small heating unit that was slowly, but surely, blowing warm air into the room. I might need some help after all. My fingers are so numb, I can't get, Paige looked up and right at him. Her vulnerability did something strange to his stomach and his heart. I've got it. Liam rubbed his hands together and kneeled back down in front of her. The laces on her boots were stiff, still half-frozen. It took some work and a lot of effort, and he struggled to keep the boot itself from moving. Paige grimaced but didn't say a word. Her face was pale, and her teeth were chattering. Got it, he said when the knot finally loosened and he carefully pried the boot off her foot. How bad does it look? Paige asked. He pulled the sock off her foot. Unlike his own, it was dry. Not bad. I don't think it's swollen, and I don't see any bruising. Just a little swelling. He carefully pressed around the area, watching her carefully. It's sore, she said, glancing down at her feet and his hands wrapped around one ankle. I don't think it's broken, Liam said, wishing he'd feel as confident as he sounded. Let's hope you're right. Paige wrapped her arms around herself. Despite the heat blasting in the room, it seemed like she was still chilled. As was he. We need to get you dry and warmed up. He quickly untied her second boot and helped her out of it before standing up and holding his hands out for her. You look like you're colder than me. And definitely wetter, she said, grimacing slightly as she put weight on her leg. I'll take a hot shower once we get you settled in, he promised, leading her to the bed. Could you hand me a clean shirt and yoga pants from my bag, she asked, pointing to the smaller of the suitcases she'd brought in from the car. The larger one was still wedged in his trunk, sitting on top of the flat tire they'd changed earlier. Had it really only been a few hours since that incident? It felt like days had passed since he'd been crouched by the side of the road, evaluating the damage. Liam unzipped the bag and dug around for a comfortable and warm-looking long-sleeve shirt and whatever yoga pants were, doing his best to ignore the bras and panties that were tucked in between the stacks of clothes. What are yoga pants, he asked. Black stretchy pants. Think wide-legged leggings, she said, a smile playing around her lips as she sat on the bed, using the towel she'd thrown on the bed earlier to dry the bottom of her hair, wet from the melting snow. Do you need help changing? he asked, handing her the requested items and the thickest pair of socks he could find in her bag. Paige shook her head, and he grabbed a change of clothes himself and disappeared into the bathroom. He needed a long, hot shower. Not just to warm up, but to clear his head and figure out how he was going to make it through a night sleeping next to Paige and the remainder of their journey while keeping his promise to Mateo. Chapter 13 Paige raised her head. It was pitch black, dark outside. The dim light from the TV screen provided the only illumination, barely enough for her to make out shapes in the room. Including that of Liam sitting one of the chairs, his legs propped up in the other. A pillow semi supported the head and shoulders. Even with this addition, it did not look comfortable, and Paige doubted he'd slept at all. She, on the other hand, had fallen asleep the moment her head hit her own pillow. She didn't remember Liam coming out of the bathroom and felt bad that he'd ended up on two hard chairs while she was comfortably snuggled under a heavy blanket. 
Liam, she called softly, her voice, barely above a whisper, in case he had managed to fall asleep. Yes? He rose and his face was partially lit by the TV. Why are you in the chairs? She sat up and pulled back the covers. Liam cleared his throat but didn't say anything. You're kidding, right? Don't tell me this is an honor and virtue thing. Paige hung her legs over the side of the bed to face Liam. You were sleeping when I came out. I didn't want to wake you. Liam shrugged. It dislodged the pillow and almost fell off the chair. He caught it in time. Thanks. She wasn't sure what else to say. It was kind, but also silly. They both needed sleep if they were going to make it to Palmer Island before the wedding. You're welcome. Liam rose and adjusted the pillow. Did you get any sleep? Paige asked, her eyes never leaving him. Some. Hungry? she asked. Some. Paige smiled at his monosyllabic answers. I'm starving. Want anything from the vending machines? She reached for her boots and pulled them on. I'll come with you. Liam got to his feet and reached for his coat. I'm fine. Paige pulled her own jacket from the back of the second chair and shrugged into it. It was still a bit damp, but warm. How's the ankle? Liam asked. His eyes followed her across the room while he put on his shoes. A little sore, but I think you're right. It's not broken. She moved her ankle around. It was stiff and there was a dull ache, but everything seemed to be in working order. Good. Let's go find some food. I could use something warm to drink, too. Liam snagged the keycard off the dresser and rushed past her to open the door. Paige sighed and followed him outside. The snow was still falling, but it seemed like it was slowing down. The snow isn't as thick. Looks like it's fizzling out. Liam echoed her thoughts as they made their way to the vending machines, him hovering by her side, his arms shooting out when she stumbled for a second. Let's hope so. We're running out of time. She liked the feel of his hand on the small of her back, where it stayed until they made it to the end of the row of rooms. What looks good? Liam asked, removing his hand to pull his wallet out of his back pocket. Paige missed the connection instantly, and warmth crept into her cheeks when she realized she had walked out without her purse. There's hot chocolate. She pointed to the third machine closest to the back wall. Both their hands were full when they returned to their room and spread out their feast on the bed and the small nightstand. Between the cookies, crackers, chips, bottled water, and hot chocolate, they should have no trouble making it until they got back on the road, hopefully first thing in the morning. I feel better. Liam finished the last of his hot chocolate, tossing the empty cup into the trash can across the room. It landed with a satisfying thud. Paige took another small sip of her own, savoring the sweet and creamy flavor. It provided a nice contrast to the nacho cheese chips she'd chosen. It reminded her of the kind of food she'd lived on her freshman year in college. These days, she avoided junk food, but maybe there was a time and place for it. I do too. This hit the spot. Looks like the snow is about to move out of the area. Let's hope the roads will be clear by the time the sun's up. Liam pointed to the TV screen where the weather channel was still circling through a series of news clips, forecasts, and shots of the weather radar. Right. You were hoping we'd be stuck here for another day or two, he asked gently. Not exactly. It had crossed her mind. It would be a nice way to get out of the wedding, and there'd be no reason for her to go all the way home. This is harder for you than you're letting on, isn't it? Liam asked, taking the empty bag of chips and cleaning up the remainder of their impromptu picnic. It is. And Faye doesn't get it. Neither did her mother. She wasn't there when it happened, right? What did you say earlier? She was on vacation? Paige nodded, swallowing around the lump in her throat that always appeared when she thought back on the last Christmas she spent on Palmer Island. She wrapped her arms around her knees, pulling herself into a ball on the bed. 
I think I get it. She didn't see him pass, did she? For her, it was like any other Christmas. But not for you. Not for me, Paige echoed, her words faint. She felt a single tear roll down her cheek. I had no idea. I guess Mateo didn't know your family back then, and I didn't move to the island until the following summer. I think you were gone by then, he said, sitting back down on the bat across from her. I took the first job I could find that was as far away as possible. Is that how you ended up in Colorado? I thought you liked to hike and ski or something. His eyes were on her, watching her carefully. Paige couldn't help but smile at the idea of her on the slopes. Skis and I don't exactly get along. I'm more of a beach girl than a mountain climber. I can see that. His eyes roamed across her, and Paige couldn't shake the feeling that he saw something other than her in a pair of yoga pants and a well-worn long sleeve t-shirt. What? Me falling on my back, giving a beetle impression as I tried to get back on my feet. If so, that's pretty much it. Paige wiped the tear from her cheek and smiled at the memory of the unfortunate sky lesson she'd tried to take a few weeks after her move to Denver. Something like that. Liam grinned, and Paige got the feeling he wasn't being entirely honest. The light overhead flickered and then went out, along with the TV. The entire room went pitch black. Hold on. Paige felt Liam rise from the bed. He stumbled around, knocking something off the nightstand before flicking the flashlight the manager of the motel had given them. It bathed a swath of the room in light. Hey, watch it. Paige raised her hand to cover her eyes when Liam pointed the beam of light right at her. Sorry. Making sure you're okay. I'm fine and not five. I'm not afraid of the dark anymore, Paige said with a smile. What did you knock off? Liam moved the light, reached down, and handed the phone to her. Paige scanned the screen and turned it on. Thankfully, it wasn't cracked. That was one thing she definitely didn't need. Especially with the snow stopping, which meant there was no more reason for her to miss the wedding. I can't believe we made it through the worst of the storm and now we lose power. Liam shook his head and walked over to the window, moving the curtain to peer outside. It was pitch black outside. Let's hope it comes back on, before it gets too cold in here. Paige could feel the cold air from the window creep across the room. I doubt they'll send anyone out until they get a chance to clear the roads. Liam closed the curtain and returned to the bed. Probably not until morning. So much for coffee and a hot shower before we leave. Paige rose and dug around in her bag, retrieving her hoodie. Without power, it would get pretty cold by morning. We'll stop for coffee on the road. Liam glanced at her and followed her example, digging through his own small duffel bag. He came back with a sweatshirt, but nothing else. Here. You might need this. Paige handed him a pink beanie she'd bought on a trip to Breckenridge last winter. Liam looked at it, shrugged, and headed back to the set of chairs. That's not going to work, Paige said, glaring at him. What do you mean? Liam asked, taking a seat and putting his legs up on the chair. You can't sleep over there. It's totally uncomfortable, and you'll freeze. I'll be fine. Liam adjusted the pillow and pulled the beanie over his head. Paige bit her lip at the sight of him in the bright pink hat. You're not going to get any rest this way. Come to bed. I don't think that's a good idea. I promise I'll behave myself, Paige said, grinning at his old-fashioned ridiculousness. We both need sleep, and we need to stay warm. I'm fine sleeping over here, Liam said, adjusting the chairs. That's a lie, and you know it. We'll have to push hard if we want to make it back in time for the wedding. You can't do that if you are sleep-deprived and frozen solid. Paige climbed into bed and pulled the covers to the side for him. Liam stared at her, but didn't move. We're both fully dressed and exhausted. We'll go to sleep, stay warm, and get on the road at first light. Or whenever the snowplow clears the roads. Get in the bed. She patted the side of the mattress. I'm not sure that's a good idea. 
Liam sat up and eyed the bed, reaching for the pillow behind him. Paige knew she had him. Get in and let me get some sleep. Fine. He climbed in, staying as close to his edge of the bed as possible, pulling the beanie over his eyes and putting his arms behind his head, wrapped around the pillow he'd brought with him. When he turned off the flashlight, Paige sighed, turned to her side, and closed her eyes, hoping for the sleep she knew they both needed. Chapter 14 He woke up to the soft sound of even breathing next to him. Liam rolled to his side and looked at the woman beside him. The faint light of the rising sun behind the half-closed curtains provided enough life for him to see her. The soft hair spread across the pillow. The adorable nose that had a freckle in the middle of it he never noticed. The long lashes that reached the top of her cheeks when her eyes were closed like they were now. Her lips were slightly parted. Paige sleeping peacefully beside him was the most beautiful sight he'd ever beheld. Her breathing changed, and her eyes fluttered open. Her gaze locked with his. Good morning, Liam said, his voice thick with emotion. Good morning. Paige brushed a strand of hair from her face and turned to look at the window. Did it stop? Snowing? A few hours ago. I think I heard a snowplow in the distance. Liam looked outside as well, sad that the spell was broken and reality had taken hold of them again. Oh, good. Maybe we can get back on the road sooner than I thought. She grabbed her phone and disabled the alarm she'd set last night before hopping out of bed and heading to the bathroom to get dressed. Liam sighed and sat up himself. By the time she returned, he was dressed and mostly packed. Give me ten minutes, and I'll be ready to go, Liam said, grabbing his toiletry bag and heading to the bathroom himself. I'll call my family and let them know what's going on, Paige said. It didn't take long to splash water on his face and brush his teeth. Paige was on the phone, pacing the length of the room as she talked. Yes, we're getting on the road as soon as we can, Paige said, looking up at him as she turned by the door to their room. She went quiet for a moment, listening to her sister or whomever she had on the other end of the line. No, we couldn't keep going. There was no way to outrun it. We tried. She looked at him and rolled her eyes. Sorry, he mouthed, before busying himself packing his toiletry bag away. I know it's inconvenient, and I wish we could be there for the rehearsal dinner tonight. Paige continued her pacing as she listened. What do you want me to say? It's not like I asked for a blizzard. Paige's eyebrows were furrowed. I have to go. If we don't get on the road soon, we'll risk missing the wedding altogether. Paige put away her phone in her purse and zipped up her duffel bag. Ready to go? Liam asked. What's that look? Paige grabbed her bags and stared at him. Nothing. He bent down to pick up his own duffel. Spit it out. I can sense your judgment from here. She took position next to the door and put her free hand on her hip. No judgment. I thought you were a little short with your sister. That's all, he added when she rolled her eyes at him. Oh, really? She's been hounding me for months about this wedding. I make every effort to get there. It's not my fault it's snowing, despite what everyone thinks. Paige's eyes were sparking with rage. The snow isn't your fault, Liam said, taking the keycard from the nightstand and taking one last look around the room to make sure they weren't forgetting anything. But I could have flown or made other travel arrangements before they sent you to get me. Paige's shoulders slumped. We'll do what we can to make it there in time. The wedding isn't until early afternoon tomorrow. That should give us more than enough time. I might even let you stop for a pee break if needed. He smirked, hoping to lift her mood, and opened the door. It worked. Paige laughed and walked out behind him. Between the two of them, it didn't take long to pack the car. I'll go check us out, Paige offered and took off, before he could stop her. Liam slammed the trunk shut and jogged after her, catching up in time to pull the door open for her. Ah, the young couple from last night. How was your stay? 
I hope it didn't get too cold with the power out for a good part of the night. The manager was the same elderly gentleman that had checked them in yesterday late afternoon when they'd slid into the parking lot. We managed fine. Thank you for the flashlight. The least I can do is pay for the room. Without me, you wouldn't be here. Paige dug around in her purse. Liam stepped up and handed his credit card to the manager. I'm paying for the room. Use the card on file. She's a kindergarten teacher. There's no way I'm letting her pay for this. The manager nodded and took his card. Of course. Give me a minute, and I'll have you on your way. I'm sure you're anxious to get to where you're going, he said. You have no idea, Paige muttered. Her sister is getting married tomorrow. She's the maid of honor. We're trying to make it to South Carolina in time. The blizzard took us by surprise, Liam said. You and everyone else. The man ran the card and handed it back to him. It's early, and the roads should be clear once you make it back on the interstate. Let's hope you're right. Liam turned and motioned for Paige to walk out ahead of him. I'm sure you'll make it. Thanks for staying with us. I hope we'll see you again sometime. Liam nodded and followed Paige to the door. Mr. Finnegan, the manager called. They both turned, and Liam tried to think of what he was forgetting. Oh, the flashlight. I think I stuck it in the car. Give me a minute. Liam couldn't believe he'd almost stolen from the kind man who'd not only given them shelter in the storm but made sure they weren't stuck in a dark room when the power went out late last night. Keep it. I have a whole case, and the way things are going for the two of you, you might need it again before you make it to the wedding. Liam nodded his thanks and raised an eyebrow, trying to figure out why the man had stopped them. The manager pointed above their heads. Liam saw the small piece of mistletoe suspended from a red ribbon. Oh. Paige spotted it at the same time. You're not going to walk out without kissing your girlfriend, are you? It's bad luck. We can't afford any more bad luck, Liam said, looking at Paige. She blinked, smiled, and turned her cheek. The phone rang, and out of the corner of his eye, Liam saw the manager answer and turn his back to them. He took a step to the left and kissed Paige on the mouth. It was quick, not much more than a peck. Yet it shot a bolt of lightning through him that would have warmed him in last night's storm. Or powered a small city for a couple of hours. It rattled him more than he thought possible as he stood there, staring at Paige, his eyes locked with hers, neither of them moving, speaking, or taking a breath. The manager's conversation, a soft, constant chatter, was the only sound in the room. Paige rose on her toes, her eyes never leaving his. Let's try that again. He lowered his head and captured her lips, with his, for a real kiss. The kiss he'd been dreaming about since she stepped out of the shower last night, looking like some Greek goddess. Her lips were soft, molding themselves perfectly to his. She tasted of warmth, coffee, and happiness. There was no other way to describe it. Not that he had a lot of brain power left to form words. Every inch of his nervous system was busy soaking up the experience of finally kissing her. A discreet cough made them break the connection. Paige took a step back, her back bumping into the closed door with a soft thud. Liam's hand shot out to steady her. He saw her cheeks turning pink and hated that their first kiss was leaving her feeling embarrassed. We should go, she whispered. He cleared his throat, turned to raise his hand in thanks to the manager, and opened the door for her. The cold winter air helped clear his mind and cool his blood. A few more minutes outside and he'd be capable of driving after the intoxicating experience of kissing Paige Taylor. Safe travels, the older man called behind them. Liam wished he'd gotten his name. He'd be forever grateful to the man and the small piece of mistletoe he'd hung up. Chapter 15 Paige sat in the car, trying to wrap her head around what had just happened. You okay? Liam asked as he pulled out of the parking lot of the small motel where they'd ridden out the blizzard. The snow was piled on the side of the road, but the street itself was clear and almost dry. I'm fine. 
Paige resisted the urge to raise her fingers to her lips. She could still feel his touching hers, tasting him, smelling him. It was a kiss she'd never forget. And over much too soon. She'd touched his face, felt the smooth-shaven skin on his cheek, wrapped her fingers around the base of his neck and played with his hair. She'd been lost in the kiss until the manager cleared his throat and made Liam jump like a boy caught with his hand in the candy jar. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me, Liam said as they made their way back to the interstate. I'm not. The words coming out of her mouth surprised her, but she meant it. What? Liam shot her a quick glance before turning his head back to watch the traffic in front of him. I'm not sorry about the kiss. She turned to face him. Well, she did as far as the cramped quarters and the seat belt allowed, looking at his profile. I'm not either. That was, something else. His smile was soft and full of emotion and made her wish they weren't back to racing toward Palmer Island, pushing the speed limit. It was. Part of her wanted to say that she hoped they'd repeat the experience at the next opportunity. Something made her hold back. Maybe he'd only kissed her because of the mistletoe. Because of tradition and the urging of the manager. We won't make it to the rehearsal dinner, but if nothing else goes wrong, we should get there in plenty of time to sleep for a few hours before the wedding. Right. You have no idea how long it takes brides and bridesmaids to get ready, do you? I'll be lucky if I get a quick nap before the 7M appointment to get my hair and makeup done. You're kidding, right? The wedding isn't until 2. Liam turned to look at her, eyes wide. Not kidding at all. Eyes on the road. We can't afford any more mishaps, remember? Paige kept her tone light, despite her words, and there was no actual danger up ahead. Right. We'll grab coffee at the next exit and then try to get as far as we can before the roads get busy, Liam said. The coffee break broke some of the tension, but things felt slightly awkward when they got back on the road, each sipping a large coffee. His was some dark roast, and hers was French vanilla with enough sugar and cream to count as liquid breakfast. Do you mind if I turn the radio on? Paige asked. Anything was better than sitting here trying to figure out what Liam was thinking about or if he'd try to kiss her again. Or even wanted to. Go ahead. Liam motioned to the radio. Paige turned the dial, landing on a country station that played mostly holiday music. With few other choices, she left it there, earning her a raised eyebrow from Liam. Paige shrugged. It wasn't ideal, but anything was better than sitting here, trying to make conversation. I might have some old CDs in the glove compartment, Liam said a little while later. She opened it and found a zippered case stuffed with them. She looked through his collection out of curiosity and to keep herself busy while he drove. Don't judge. Most of these are from my rebellious teenage stage. Liam grinned, and she noticed an adorable dimple in his right cheek. How had she missed this before? The Smiths. Muse. The Killers. And Dixie Chicks? Paige tried to and failed to keep from giggling. Interesting combo. Hey, I said, don't judge. I'm pretty sure your CD collection didn't look much better. Never had one. I'm all digital. Paige motioned to her phone. Now you tell me. There's a USB cable somewhere around here if you want to. Paige laughed. It's fine. One of these will work. She slid the killer's CD in and pushed play. Good choice. Liam grinned as the upbeat song played. The sun was out in full force, the road ahead of them wide open with little traffic to slow them down. Liam tapped the on the steering wheel to the beat of the music. The trees and occasional buildings lining the interstate flew past them. Paige glanced at the speedometer. Liam was pushing it, going well past the speed limit and what he had deemed safe back in Colorado and Kansas. She thought about saying something, but kept her mouth shut. They were making good time, and who knew? She might be able to sneak in a few hours of sleep once they got home, after all. Paige sang the chorus of the next song. 
It had been a huge hit when she was a teenager and she'd always loved it. She glanced at Liam out of the corner of her eye, trying to judge if he'd mind. Or if he was getting ready to make fun of her singing the way one of her male cousins had on a family vacation when she was in middle school. The grin on his face widened, and he joined in. Before long, the two of them were singing at the tops of their lungs, racing towards South Carolina and her sister's wedding. Shoot. Liam took his foot off the gas and Paige felt the car slowing down almost immediately, but it was too late. The patrol car they'd passed turned on its lights and pulled onto the highway, catching back up to them, lights blazing. How fast were you going? Paige asked, turning as Liam continued to slow down and pull over onto the shoulder. I'm not sure, but it was at least 80. His eyes were on the road in front of them, both hands gripped the steering wheel. Paige reached over and turned the music off. This isn't good, she muttered, thinking how much time this would cost them. No kidding. Let me do the talking. Maybe we can speed this up and get back on the road. His lips were tight, his eyes not meeting hers. Okay. She doubted there was any talking yourself out of it, but with a little luck, the officer would issue them a ticket and let them get back on the road. They sat there, quietly, waiting with the blue lights bouncing off the inside of the car while the officer behind them did whatever they did. Running Liam's plate was Paige's best guess. Liam's fingers tapped on the steering wheel. She felt the nervous energy rolling off him, so different from the joy they'd shared listening to one of his favorite bands earlier. Paige felt guilty for choosing something so upbeat. Certain songs gave her a bit of a lead foot and had led to two tickets in the past three years. The officer finally got out of his car and approached Liam's car from the driver's side. Liam rolled down the window, and Paige held her breath. License and registration, please, the middle-aged man in uniform said. Yes, sir. Liam grabbed both and handed them out the window. Do you know how fast you were going? The man scanned the ID before peeking into the car, nodding at Paige. About 70? Liam said. The officer shook his head. 96. Ouch. I had no idea. I'm sorry. The speed limit is 65, and you were well over that. Is there any reason why you were going this fast? We're on our way to her sister's wedding. Got slowed down by the blizzard. Liam took her hand and squeezed it while looking at the highway patrol officer. That snow was something else, but no reason for reckless driving. I wouldn't call this reckless. There weren't many people on the road, and I was trying to make up some of the time we lost. You understand. I don't. Please step out of the vehicle, sir. The officer's face turned grim, and Paige's stomach dropped. Hey, man, I'm just trying to make it to South Carolina. Can't you let us go off with a warning? I promise to slow it down. I'm usually a very responsible driver, I swear. Liam's tone was pleading, but Paige could tell it wasn't doing any good. I asked you to leave your vehicle, the officer repeated, his voice even sterner than before. Do what he says, Paige hissed. If Liam kept this up, they'd both end up in cuffs. All right. I'm getting out. Liam unbuckled and opened the door. The officer took a step to the side. Would you like me to exit as well? Paige asked, keeping her tone calm and polite. If you don't mind. Step around to the trunk. She joined Liam and the officer there, who patted Liam down. You're heading to South Carolina for a wedding? The officer asked, turning his head in her direction. Yes, sir. My sister is getting married tomorrow. I'm the maid of honor. She looked the man straight in the eye. That's cutting it pretty close. Is there a reason you didn't leave earlier, giving you enough time to avoid speeding? He asked, stepping away from Liam. That was my fault. I tried to get out of attending, Paige said. The officer raised an eyebrow. It's a long story, but let's say I haven't been back home on Palmer Island in years and wasn't planning on going back this Christmas, wedding or no wedding. Palmer Island? Beautiful place. 
I spent my honeymoon down there. Paige caught Liam perk up out of the corner of her eyes and spoke up before he could open his mouth. It is. Unfortunately, I have some sad memories tied to the island. Bad enough to skip your sister's wedding? The man asked. Paige shrugged. I thought so. My family sent Liam to make sure I got there. We thought we had plenty of time to make tonight's rehearsal dinner but got stuck in the snow a couple of hours back. She motioned to the road behind them. I'm sure your sister appreciates you changing your mind. When's the dinner? Paige glanced at her watch. In four hours. My family knows we won't make it on time. Will this keep us from making it to the ceremony tomorrow? Paige asked. Liam over here is the best man. I'd hate for my sister and her future husband to have both of us miss her big day. The officer looked from her to Liam and back again. To be honest, I'd considered taking you in for reckless driving, but all things considered, I can let you go with a ticket. One I expect you to pay and no more speeding. He looked at Liam, who thankfully kept his mouth shut and nodded. He looked remorseful and a bit like he'd like to disappear into a hole in the ground. Paige held her breath while the officer finished his paperwork. Here you go. I'm serious about the speeding. I'll radio to my colleagues ahead. If we catch you speeding again, there will be serious consequences. He handed Liam the ticket, along with his driver's license and registration. Thank you. We can't tell you how much we appreciate it, Paige said. No more speeding, I promise. Liam took the entire stack of documents, not looking at any of it. I'm holding you to that. The officer turned to Paige. Congratulations to your sister and her future husband. Enjoy the wedding and your time back on the island. That was a close call, Paige said when they were both back in the car. You can say that again. I can't believe he threatened to arrest us. Liam started the engine and looked twice before pulling back onto the interstate. He sped up but stopped about five miles short of the speed limit. Paige was relieved to see it. As upset as the highway patrol officer had seemed, she had no doubt he'd follow through on his threat. He was probably making good on this threat of asking his fellow officers to keep an eye out for their vehicle. I think he was serious. I'm glad he changed his mind. Hmm. Liam's eyes stayed on the road, only occasionally glancing down to the speedometer. He was quiet for a long time. Paige didn't say anything either. Instead, she thought about what it would have meant if they had been taken to the station, or worse, to jail. There's no way she could have gotten both of them bailed out in time to make it to the wedding. For the first time, she realized how crappy her behavior really had been. They wanted her there for the most important day of her life. Her family missed her and wanted her to join into what was supposed to be a happy and joyful day for them all. And here she'd only been thinking about herself and the grief she'd had time to work through for three years. Maybe it was time to look at this from Faye's point of view. Either way, she was glad they were on their way and if luck was on their side, they'd make it with enough time to spare to keep Faye and their mother from having a panic attack. Chapter 16 Liam kept a close eye on the speedometer as they continued making their way to South Carolina. He couldn't believe he'd gotten a speeding ticket. The money was no big deal, but Matteo and the rest of his friends would never let him live that down. The teasing would be brutal. It didn't help that he'd made it a point of pride that he didn't get a single parking ticket all throughout their college days, unlike the rest of their group. There was a good chance this would put enough points on his license to cause his insurance to go up too. Liam wondered if Patrick, his agent, could do something about that. He'd done a good job with the guy's Roth IRA account. Maybe Pat could call in some favors or something. Liam shook his head. He saw Paige turn to look at him. She didn't say anything and returned her attention to her phone. He had no idea what she was doing on that device but it seemed to grab her entire attention. Some silly game probably. Mobile game stocks were doing well for a reason. Maybe he should recommend them to his clients more often. 
between the wedding and Christmas, and, of course, the recovery from driving over 6,000 miles in three days, he wouldn't get back to work until well after Christmas. Maybe not even until the first of the year. The thought made him antsy. He was ready to head back into his office and dive into the latest numbers. Liam rolled his shoulders, took a couple of deep breaths, and cleared his mind. He had a job to do, and that was to get Paige and himself to the wedding on time. And so far, he hadn't done that great of a job. The silence in the car was thick. How had they gone from their easy camaraderie, and, if he were honest, quite a bit more than that, to whatever this was? Liam cleared his throat. Paige looked up from her phone. I'm sorry for getting us in trouble and causing more delays. It's as much my fault as yours, she said, her voice sincere. You didn't do anything. I was the one driving, he said. And speeding. I picked the music and cranked it up. Beats like that always make me drive faster than I should. Her cheeks were turning pink. He noticed it out of the corner of his eye. Picking up beat music doesn't count. It was my foot on the pedal. He felt his lip twitch up at the guilty look on her face. Let's agree it was a joint mistake. Faye and Mateo sure picked winners for their main wedding party, didn't they? Liam shook his head. This wasn't your fault. It was all mine. You're the one who saved our bacon with the highway patrol officer. If he'd booked us or impounded my car, there's no way we'd make it in time, he said. I know. Her voice was barely audible. Liam couldn't shake the feeling that all of this was bothering her more than she was letting on. It broke his heart. He reached over and took her hand. He squeezed it, hoping she'd get the point. We're both being silly. It happened, and we are back on track. Let's not beat ourselves up about what might have been. Deal. She squeezed her hand in response. Good. I think we might need some food. Something solid. That'll make us feel better. His stomach grumbled at the mere mention of something to eat. Paige nodded. And coffee. Definitely more coffee. She raised her hand to cover a yawn. Liam couldn't agree more. The yawning proved to be contagious. We'll hit one of the next fast food places. Any preference? None whatsoever. I don't think I've been to any sort of fast food place in a decade. Not since my freshman year in college. Seriously? Liam had a hard time believing this. Palmer Island didn't have a single fast food place, and he still ate it at least several times per month. He couldn't imagine giving it up for years. Seriously? Paige laughed, and Liam wondered how shocked he looked. Well, let's fix that. I know exactly how we're going to break that hiatus. He headed for the next exit. As luck would have it, there was a Bojangles less than half a mile from the interstate. He pulled into the parking lot and waited for her to join him. What looks good, he asked, his eyes on her face as she scanned the large board of food offerings. Honestly, I don't know. What are you having, she asked. Chicken sandwich and fries with a sweet tea. It was his regular order and always hit the spot. That sounds good. Mind ordering me the same while I go freshen up, she asked. And maybe some coffee as well? He did as asked. The food was ready by the time she reappeared, and they got back in the car. Mind handing me food once we're back on the interstate? Liam asked. He wasn't about to risk stopping for a dinner break, no matter how short. Besides, this was fast food. He could eat a sandwich and fries while he was driving. Sure thing. Paige had his chicken sandwich partially unwrapped and ready for him by the time he got up to speed. Thanks. What do you think? Any good, he asked, keeping an eye on the speedometer before taking a bite. This is great. Love the fries too, she said, popping another fry into her mouth. It's all the salt and seasoning. It's my favorite when I'm on the road. Or when I'm stressed. There's something about it. Comfort food, Paige said, nodding her head. 
what's yours, he asked, curious, and glad they were talking again. I'll tell you only if you promise not to laugh. Paige's eyes were gleaming with mirth. I pinky promise. He held out his right hand, and she locked her pinky with his. The brief connections sent a strange spark through his hand, up his arm, and into his chest. It had nothing to do with static electricity, and he could tell it was affecting Paige as well. Mashed potatoes with garlic salt and cheese. She looked at him. He could feel those pretty eyes of hers scanning his face. I don't know about the garlic salt, but I'm a fan of mashed potatoes with cheese. My mom reheats leftover ones with slices of cheddar cheese on top, and if you ask me, it's better than it was the first day. Definitely. And there's something about the garlic and extra salt. It reminds me a little of these fries. Paige grabbed more fries. I think you're right. Hand me a few more. Liam held his hands out for the bag of fries. Here you go. What do you think? Should we risk turning the radio back on? Paige asked, holding them out to him. Getting bored with talking to me already? He asked. Not at all. Just feels weird to spend this much time in the car without music. It's probably not a good idea though, since it gives both of us a bit of a lead foot. Paige reached for her coffee and took a sip. She grimaced instantly, and Liam had a feeling she would have spit the hot liquid out if they weren't sitting in a car, going 65 miles per hour. Bad, he asked. Undrinkable, she said after forcing herself to swallow the coffee. Liam took a sip himself, a small one. This is pretty bad. The coffee was barely lukewarm, and it tasted burned and slightly beefy. Didn't trust me? Paige asked, her lips twitching up. I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently, Liam said. I guess so. Actually, that explains a lot. We'll pour this out as soon as we stop for gas. We're down to a third of a tank. Good plan. What do you want to do until then? Paige asked. How about a car game? I remember having a ton of fun with my cousins on summer vacations. Like what? Punch bug? Paige asked, gently punching him in the shoulder. Sort of. Not too many VW Beetles on the road anymore, and maybe we better not test our luck with physical violence in the car, he said. Paige almost spit out her tea. Physical violence? I barely touched you. Liam shook his head. You know what I mean. Something could go wrong. Right. You might drive into the guardrails or something. Do you remember any other car games? She asked. How about the license plate game? I don't remember how that one goes. You try to spot a plate from every single state. Each new state gets you a point. The person with the most points wins, he explained. Sounds good. Florida and North Carolina. Oh, and there's Georgia, Paige called excitedly. They played until neither of them could remember what states they'd seen before, or who had how many points. Let's call it a draw, Paige said, and Liam gladly agreed. He glanced at the dashboard clock, surprised two hours had passed since they'd started their game. Are you sure? Liam asked when Paige insisted on driving after they'd stopped for gas and better coffee. I am. You need a break, and I need something to do after all this coffee and sugar. Paige took another sip of the vanilla cappuccino she'd chosen from the machine at the small gas station where they'd stopped. He'd opted for a plain coffee and a hot chocolate to mix it with. All right. But go easy on the clutch. I'm not sure it can take much more abuse. He tried to balance his hot chocolate on top of his coffee and failed, almost wearing both on his sweatshirt. Here. Paige pulled the passenger door open for him. Liam leaned into the car and put the cups in the cup holders. When he backed out and rose, he almost bumped into Paige. He turned to face her and apologized. Worried about your car, are you? She teased. Something like that. His mouth had gone dry, being so close to her. He could feel her breath on him, her warmth touched him. 
Paige took a tiny step to close the tiny bit of distance between them. She reached up and ran her fingers through his hair. It was the most incredible feeling, setting every nerve cell in his body on fire. What? Paige shook her head, raised to her toes, and tenderly brushed her soft lips across his. One hand wrapped around his shoulder, using it to steady herself as she deepened the kiss. Liam lost himself in the taste and feel of her. She tasted of coffee, caramel, and every sweet thing he'd ever tasted. He couldn't get enough of her. Darn coats and this stupid need to breathe. He reluctantly created five inches of space between them, keeping one arm around her, desperate for a connection to the woman who'd turned his life upside down in a matter of days. That was nice, Paige said, her voice rough. She licked her lips, drawing Liam's attention back to that delectable mouth of hers. He was tempted to pull her in for round two when she took a step back and ran her fingers through her hair. Understatement of the day, he said instead. Paige laughed. Point taken. That was very nice. Something you'd like to repeat sometime soon, he asked. Maybe. Paige blinked and turned to walk around the car. Liam's arm shot out before he could think about it. He put his hand on her shoulder to stop her. Paige turned back and looked at him with those pretty big eyes of hers. Liam closed the distance between them and gave her a quick kiss. I can't wait to dance with you at the wedding. Hold you in my arms for more than 30 seconds. Paige nodded, but a shadow fell over her face. In that case, we better get on the road, or we'll miss more than the rehearsal dinner. She had a point, but there was something about her that set off the alarm bells in the back of his head. She felt withdrawn somehow as they got back in the car, and she pulled into the steady stream of rush hour traffic. Paige was quiet, and he didn't know what to say to start the conversation. He fiddled with the radio station for a while, finally giving up when he couldn't get anything other than Christmas music. Even the news radio stations were playing holiday music. It was of the classical variety, but the melodies and themes were easily recognizable. When Paige still didn't say a word or looked in his directions ten miles farther down the road, Liam reached over to grab her hand. She felt miles away, and he needed to cross the invisible chasm that was forming between them. Paige held his hand for a moment, then pulled it away, pretending to shift into a non-existent seventh gear. Penny for your thoughts, he asked, afraid of what he might get in return. I'm wondering where we'll go from here. What's the point in starting something when your life is on Palmer Island, and mine back in Colorado? Isn't it a little early to worry about that kind of thing, he said. It was the first thing that came to mind, and he regretted his words almost as soon as they came out of his mouth. Maybe. Forget I said anything. You should try to sleep while you can. We still have a long way to go. Paige reached for her coffee and drank half of it before returning her full attention to the road in front of him. All right. Liam grabbed a few fries. They were cold, but he needed something to get this big lump out of his throat. He washed it down with some water and leaned back in the seat. Closing his eyes, he pretended to sleep while mulling over what he thought their future together might look like and what it meant that Paige didn't think they had one. Chapter 17 Paige wasn't sure if Liam was asleep or if he was only pretending. His eyes were closed, and he didn't make a sound for at least half an hour. It gave her a moment to think about what this thing between her and Liam was. If it was an actual thing. Something more than an infatuation that would be gone as soon as they were no longer forced to spend all of their time together. Paige sighed softly. There was no way of figuring it out. Not until they were both firmly entrenched back in their everyday lives. Not until it was too late. She risked another glance at Liam. She wasn't sure, but it felt like he was only pretending to be out cold. Something about his breathing didn't feel like deep sleep. Not that any of this mattered. They had responsibilities at the wedding and then she'd find a way to get back home and resign herself to the fact that she was teaching second grade. She loved teaching her kindergartners, but the thought of a classroom full of seven- and eight-year-olds made her shudder. 
and Liam would get back to whatever he did when he wasn't busy managing other people's money. Paige forced herself to concentrate on the road ahead of her. Still, every once in a while, as the sun set behind them, she snuck a glance at Liam. He kept pretending to sleep. Until he wasn't. Paige almost drove off the road when her eyes connected with his. To her surprise, he didn't say anything when she corrected their path and got back into the center of the lane. He didn't even flinch and was back to pretending to be asleep when Paige's phone rang. She lowered the volume and answered. It wasn't like Liam was actually asleep. But at least his eyes were getting some rest. Faye, how are you? All set for the rehearsal, she asked, keeping her voice as low as the hands-free speaker option allowed. It meant Liam could hear both sides of the conversation, but she wasn't willing to risk picking up the phone while she was driving. We're good. At least I think so. Helen is doing an amazing job. She'll grab you tomorrow morning to walk you through the ceremony. Right after hair and makeup. Faye sounded excited and less freaked out than Paige had feared. I'm sorry we're not going to be there tonight, but who imagined there'd be a blizzard? Right. Who would expect snow in December? Faye's tone changed, and Paige felt her own resentment about this Christmas wedding rising up again. What's that supposed to mean, she asked, her voice frosty. That it would have been nice if you didn't decide to have a total diva moment right when I'm getting married. Faye's tone was sharp, and the accusation stung more than Paige wanted to admit. Right. I'm the diva here. You're the one who decided to get married on Christmas even, Paige shook her head. She shouldn't go there. Not now. Excuse me for wanting the wedding of my dreams. You know I've always dreamed of this. Paige nodded. Her sister was right. She had played out a Christmas wedding, complete with holly and poinsettias, since they were both little girls. Paige had always thought it was ridiculous. You had a wedding in May or June, not in December. But Faye always had other ideas. If it were up to her, she'd have a horse-drawn sled and a long, white cloak lined with fake fur. And, of course, snow. When they'd played pretend, there had always been massive amounts of snow. Not something that would ever happen on Palmer Island. You could have flown. Or made arrangements months ago. Helen and Mateo tried to keep this from me, but I know why Liam is there. I know you tried to get out of the wedding. I can't believe my own sister is that selfish. Faye's voice was cracking. Paige swallowed hard. She caught movement out of the corner of her eye. Liam was watching her. He shot her a look that told her he didn't think Faye's accusations were all that far-fetched. Paige glared at him, and the man had the good sense to busy himself with his own phone. Maybe they both had a point. It was selfish to avoid her sister's wedding, her big day, because she was afraid to deal with her grief and her memories of her grandfather. I'm sorry, Faye. You're right. I should be there right now to support you, to help with all the million little details, to make tomorrow perfect. Thank you, was all Faye said. They were both quiet for a long time, processing their emotions. At least Paige was. I'll be there as soon as I can, and you'll have my full attention from the moment I set foot on the island. I promise, Paige said. Good. I'm glad you'll be there. Listen, I have to run. Helen is here to take care of a few things. I'll see you soon, Paige said before ending the call. She half expected Liam to say something, but he was still glued to his own phone, scrolling through email or something. Paige kept her eyes on the road and replayed the conversation with her sister in her mind. She wished there was a way to turn back time. A way to go back three months, take a few vacation days, and book a flight that would have gotten her there earlier this week. But there was no such thing, only regret and the ability to make the best of what was. She stepped on the gas a little, going a couple of miles an hour faster. She was eager to make it to Palmer Island to see her family and to make sure Faye and Mateo's wedding tomorrow went off without a hitch. I could use more coffee. How about you? Liam said half an hour later. 
They hadn't spoken much, and he had not said a word about her conversation with Faye. Paige was grateful for that. Her heart felt raw, emotions of regret and uncertainty about the future churning in her chest. Coffee sounds great. I'm going to need it if I want to keep my eyes open the rest of the way, Paige said. It was all she could do not to yawn. I'll drive the rest of the way. Liam sat up and scrolled through his phone. You barely slept. Probably not at all. I got some rest. I'll be fine. No coffee shops open this late, but there's a large truck stop coming up in 20 miles, he said, still looking at the bright screen in his hand. Let's hope they have decent coffee. Paige inched the speedometer up another tick, earning her a raised eyebrow from Liam. What? I've got a pee. He shook his head but kept quiet. She knew he was worried about another speeding ticket and the consequences if they got pulled over again. They probably wouldn't get away with a fine a second time. She let off the gas a little, not willing to disappoint Faye and the rest of her family. Thank you, Liam said. I've been thinking. That's never a good way to start a conversation. Paige felt the anxiety rising in her chest. I'm not starting a conversation. We've been chatting almost non-stop since Denver. I just thought that before we make it to the island, we should talk about us. Paige risked a quick glance. He was serious. Is there any S? She asked quietly, not sure what she wanted the answer to be. I hope so. It is, if we want it to be. Liam wasn't looking at her. Instead, he was staring at the dark road ahead of them. Would that even work? We barely know each other and live thousands of miles apart. The only time we've spent together has been on this road trip. And it hasn't been the most fun and exciting experience, has it? Liam asked dryly. Paige laughed. You can say that again. But it's had its moments. Watching him sleep on her couch, listening to him belt out Christmas tunes, seeing him and the flashlight in the snowy woods, feeling his lips crushed against hers. The memories flashed up like a slideshow or a montage in one of those cheesy 90s rom-coms she still loved. It's been more fun than I thought it would be. You're not what I expected when I drove out. What did you expect, she asked. Someone a little more entitled and stubborn. She could feel more than see the smirk on his face. I'm plenty stubborn and a bit of a spoiled brat. Ask Faye. She'll give you an earful. No, you're not. You're kind and dedicated to your job. You feel deeply, and this is just a guess, but when you give someone your heart, you love them unconditionally. That's why it's so hard for you to go back home, isn't it? His voice was tender, the words barely more than a whisper. Paige swallowed the lump in her throat. It's time. I can't stay away from Palmer Island forever. There's so much I've missed already, and so much I don't want to miss out on. Thank you for dragging me back. Even if it was kicking and screaming. To her relief, she saw the tall sign advertising the truck stop. A few more minutes and she could get out of the car and create a bit of distance between herself and Liam. You were reluctant, that's all. I'm glad you changed your mind. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm glad I came to pick you up. It's been very nice getting to know you the past few days, Paige Taylor. It's been nice getting to know you too. Paige smiled a sad little smile. But that doesn't change the facts. Your life is on Palmer Island and mine is in Denver. Right. Long distance is hard. It's not like I can pick up and drive across the country every other week, and you probably don't get a lot of time off outside of school breaks. He sounded as disappointed as Paige felt at the prospect of not letting this go any further. Right. And then there's the wedding. I wouldn't want to take away from Faye and Mateo's big day by telling our family and friends that we are, she wasn't sure what they were. You couldn't really call it dating or even seeing each other, could you? You're right. Faye would have a fit if we became the couple everyone talked about. Liam sat back and Paige thought she heard a little sigh come from the passenger seat. Let's focus on the wedding. 
make this about Fay and Mateo, not us. And then, when those two are off on their honeymoon, we can see what happens. Paige pulled into a well-lit parking spot right in front of the truck stop. Sounds like a plan. Liam unbuckled and turned toward her. He took her right hand in his. But I'm still getting that dance. Chapter 18 They were on the home stretch. Liam drank the last sip of his coffee and settled in for the last leg of the drive. They'd made it into South Carolina, and part of him felt sad that this crazy road trip adventure was coming to an end. It's nice to be back in South Carolina, Paige said. She was curled up in the seat beside him, looking sleepy. Right on cue, she yawned, covering her mouth with both hands before rubbing her eyes and running her fingers through her hair. We should be there in another four hours, Liam said. Paige groaned, and he felt her pain. In the big scheme of things, a few more hours was no big deal, and any other day he wouldn't mind, but tonight he was ready to get out of the car. Try to nap, if you can. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day, he said. If you don't mind, I might take you up on that, Paige said, reaching for her hoodie and balling it up to use as a pillow. Wake me if you feel sleepy. Liam nodded. When he glanced at her again a few miles down the road, her breathing was even, and he was fairly certain she was sound asleep. What did I get myself into, he whispered, to no one in particular. Paige's rejection, if you could call it that, hurt. It wasn't like he had some big plans for their future together, but it would have been nice to see where this went. The worst part was that she was right. Tomorrow should be all about Mateo and Faye. And that meant keeping their attraction on the down low. And really, what chance for a fulfilling relationship did they have, living so far away from each other? Of course, he could consider moving. There wasn't anything that tied him to Palmer Island. He could serve his clients remotely if they stayed with him, and he was pretty sure Coloradoans needed just as much financial advice as people in the rest of the country. Except, he liked his life on the small island. He'd fallen in love with the community and the small town feel of it. And it was hard to beat the weather and the views. If the blizzard had done anything besides making them late, it was to remind him how much he hated dealing with snow. One night had been plenty. It hardly ever snowed on Palmer Island. On the rare occasion it did, and they ended up with more than a powdered sugar looking dusting off the white stuff, the entire town shut down. Everyone congregated outside to build snowmen, make snow angels, and start a snowball fight. The next morning, it would all be gone with nothing more than a few clumps of gray snow to serve as a reminder of the fun they'd had. It was his idea of a perfect snow day. Mostly though, there were plenty of crisp, cold sunny days, perfect for walking the beach or staying inside by the fire. Maybe Paige had a point. He wasn't ready to give up his new home. How could he expect her to give up hers? And unlike him, her job tied her to Denver. Liam blinked and opened the window to let a little cool air into the car. He was getting sleepy, his eyelids growing heavy. Do you want to switch back? Paige asked. I'm fine. Just worn out from the drive. Sorry about the cold air. Whatever it takes to get us there. I'm happy to drive the rest of the way. I got a nice little nap in. She yawned again. Liam glanced at the GPS. The road was familiar now, and he'd turned the screen on his phone off a while ago. To his surprise, they were less than an hour away from their final destination. I don't mind driving. We're almost there. Why don't you change the destination to your parents' address, he said. I'm assuming that's where you're staying. Of course. What did you think I was doing? Renting a room with Miss Doris? Paige's tone was light, and he could feel her smile beside him. To be honest, my brain stopped working a hundred miles ago. Liam wasn't joking. He hadn't felt this drained since finals week in college. Got it. I'm on it. Paige took his phone and typed away. Oh, nice. 56 minutes to go. Liam was too tired to come up with a response to that. 
Instead, he focused what was left of his concentration on getting them there. Good thing he knew the roads by heart. At this point, this close to midnight, they were almost completely empty. You are exhausted, aren't you? Paige dug around in her purse, but came up empty. What are you looking for, he asked, confused. Candy, or anything else to pep you up a bit. I think I finished all my coffee. Paige picked up her cup and shook it. I don't need anything. We're almost there. And after he dropped her off, he planned on falling into bed and sleeping as long as he could. The last thing he needed was anything that would keep him up for hours. All right. How about some music and more fresh air then? Paige rolled down her window and turned the music back on. The killer started blaring into the night air. You're going to wake everyone up, Liam said, dialing down the volume to a level that wouldn't travel half a mile outside the car. Who? The cows? I doubt they mind. Paige pointed to the line of wire fencing that was barely visible in the light of the high beams. Just watch your speed. She had a point, but his head was aching, and while the air and the upbeat tempo of the song helped, any loud noises felt like someone stabbing a needle in his brain. Paige, on the other hand, was looking more alert than he'd seen her in hours. Her head was swiveling back and forth, trying to penetrate the darkness around them. She practically bounced in her seat when the bridge that connected Palmer Island to the mainland came into view. It was well lit and could be seen from miles away. We're almost there. That's the bridge. Liam grinned. Seeing her so excited to come back to the island that was his home made something in his chest glow. He couldn't tell if it was pride or something even more powerful, hope. Paige pointed out landmarks and houses of some of the Palmer Island residents as they passed them. All too soon, and not soon enough, he turned into the road that her parents' house was on. Did you grow up here? Liam asked. Sure did. My parents bought the place before Faye and I were born. They brought both of us here, straight from the hospital. Liam turned into the wide concrete driveway that led up to a stilt house on a corner lot. If he had to guess, he'd say they were a row or two from the beach, not far from the Palmer Island Marina. Not that anything was far in their small seaside community. It's a beautiful house. He watched Paige exit the car and turn around to grab her stuff when the front door opened. The wide porch was well lit, and a man in his late forties or early fifties jogged down the stairs. Liam got out of the car in time to watch the man embrace Paige. You made it. We did. Paige stepped back and turned to Liam. Liam, meet my dad. Liam, I can't thank you enough. Jim Taylor shook his hand. Oh, right. I forgot that you two know each other. Paige looked embarrassed, and despite the low light, Liam thought he could see her cheeks turning pink again. He'd miss that, he realized, with a pang. He'd miss seeing her get flustered, smile, talk his head off, and he'd even miss hearing her sing badly to her favorite songs. Let's get your luggage. I'm sure Liam here is ready to get home. We have a big day tomorrow. Jim walked to the trunk of the car and waited for Liam to open it. Right. And I'm sure Paige is ready for her beauty sleep, too. Liam pulled out a few of her bags and handed them to Paige before lifting the huge trunk out with the help of her dad. Is that everything? Jim asked, scanning the luggage like he'd expected more. That's it. Paige jogged back down the stairs, the rest of her luggage sitting just inside the open front door. Do you want help to get this inside? Liam asked, pointing to the trunk they'd sat down on the ground. We've got it. You head on home. Thank you for the ride. Paige grabbed one side of the trunk and her father the other. You're welcome. Liam got in his car. As he watched the two of them walk up the stairs, he realized how much he wanted an actual goodbye with Paige. How much he would have liked to walk her to the door and how much he wanted to kiss her goodnight. He couldn't shake the feeling he'd missed his last chance, and that hurt more than he wanted to admit. When the phone rang at nine the next morning, Liam was surprised to hear from Helen, the couple's wedding planner. 
Helen? Everything okay? The young woman on the other end of the line laughed. Of course. I'm calling to check in on you. I'm glad you made it back. Liam had messaged Mateo and Helen the moment he'd walked in the door a little past midnight. Then he'd taken a long, hot shower and crashed on the couch before contemplating if it was worth trying to make it to the bed or just crash where he was. The couch had won, and his back wasn't thanking him for the choice. Thanks. So am I, he said, sitting up and running his fingers through his hair. I can't tell you how much Mateo and Faye appreciate all this. As do I. Is there anything you need? she asked. I'm good. All I need is a good eight hours of sleep, and I'll be ready for best man duties. Perfect. I'll meet you at your place in an hour to catch you up on what you missed at the rehearsal tonight. Don't worry, nothing too complicated. Liam glanced at his watch. He had just enough time to make coffee and grab a quick shower. Sounds good. And really, thank you. I know this was a big ask. Everyone around here appreciates that you went all the way out to Colorado to get Paige. Helen's voice was sincere. Anything for Mateo, no matter what it cost me, he said. It was more than he'd meant to reveal. What's wrong? Did something happen on the trip? Helen asked. Forget I said anything. It's nothing. All right. Find some coffee. I'll see you in a bit. Liam sighed when Helen hung up the phone. He threw the blanket he'd covered up with off his legs. Time to face the day and make a strong pot of coffee. He'd need it before spending all day around Paige tomorrow. Chapter 19 You look beautiful. Paige stood next to Faye and looked at her sister in the stunning floor-length wedding gown. The wide neck left the bride's shoulders bare, and the tiny pearls that studded the dress in thin lines made Faye somehow seem taller than her five-foot-two frame. Or maybe it was the stiletto she wore. Not for the first time, Paige was thankful for the much more comfortable-looking footwear Helen had chosen to go with the forest green made of honor dress she was wearing. So do you. The Taylor sisters, together again. Faye's smile lit up the room as she hugged Paige, carefully. And let's not forget about the rest of your bridesmaids. We make a court worthy of a princess. Kate whooshed her skirt and took her place on Faye's other side, wearing the same silver dress with green accents as the rest of the bridesmaids. I wouldn't want to do this without any of you girls. Faye wrapped her other arm around Kate and Paige, took a step back. I'll be right back. She rushed out of her sister's old bedroom and down the hall to the bathroom they'd shared for as long as she could remember. Paige, everything okay? The voice of Helen Williams carried over the running water in the sink. Be right out. Paige resisted the urge to splash cold water on her face. She couldn't do that to the makeup artist who'd done an amazing job. Instead, she wet a washcloth and pressed it against the back of her neck and took a few calming steps before stepping back into the hall. I thought we could run over to the church and walk through the ceremony. What do you think? Are you up for it? Helen asked. She looked classy in a black sheet dress, a short, tailored jacket, and ankle boots. That's not a bad idea. Last night Paige had been too tired to worry about the logistics of today's ceremony, but this morning, with everything and everyone in motion, she'd had to work hard to tap down the anxiety that kept trying to rear its ugly head. It had been years since she'd been to the church. Not since her grandfather's funeral. Thankfully, Helen made it easy, driving her over to the building, introducing her to the Reverend Paige vaguely remembered, and walking her through the motions of this afternoon's ceremony. That's about it. Questions? Helen asked, motioning for Paige to take a seat next to her in the pew. Everything's pretty straightforward. I think I'll be able to keep up with everyone else. Paige smiled, surprised at how much calmer and even excited she felt after the quick run through. Liam said the same thing. I'm glad you're both ready to roll. Helen leaned back and turned, studying Paige's face. Right. 
Paige lowered her head and studied the worn hardwood floor below her feet. You two got close over the past few days, didn't you? Helen asked softly. What did he say? Paige asked, looking up at her. Not a word. It's more of a vibe I've been getting. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. We had a moment. Paige forced herself to smile. And? Helen asked. We agreed that there was no point. He has his life here. I'm heading back to Colorado right after Christmas. Ah. That makes sense. At least you both made the decision early. Better now than later. Helen took her hand and squeezed it. She made it sound like Paige and Liam barely knew each other. On the surface, that might be true, but somehow, the road trip had brought them close and Paige felt like she'd known Liam for much more than a couple of days. Still, she nodded. This wasn't something she wanted to discuss with someone who was almost a stranger. And her sister's wedding planner. Right. And today should be all about Faye and Mateo. It's their big day. Paige pulled her hand away and put it in her lap. Glad to hear that. You're right. We don't want to do anything to distract from the bride. Ready to head back? Paige rose. By the time they made it back to the house, she had her emotions under control. All set, her mother asked when they walked back into the door. She was sipping a glass of champagne and offered one to each of them. Helen declined, but Paige grabbed a glass and took a small sip. A little liquid courage couldn't hurt. Especially when she spotted Kate across the room. Paige, is that you? You made it. An elderly woman with steel gray eyes stepped out of the living room and into the kitchen, wrapping Paige in a warm hug. Miss Doris. It's so nice to see you. Paige didn't try to hide her surprise or her joy. She'd always loved the pillar of the Palmer Island community. Miss Doris was a character and had a bit of a reputation as a matchmaker. I heard Liam went to pick you up. He's such a nice young man. And very successful, from what I hear. Miss Doris's eyes were twinkling, and Paige had to fight hard not to let her annoyance show. Couldn't everyone drop the topic and just get on with the wedding? She was here, wasn't she? He did and got me here in time, she said. What about you? I didn't expect to see you until the wedding. Paige. Her mother raised her voice, and her eyebrows shot up in sync with the words. Sorry, that came out wrong. I really am glad to see you. It surprised me, that's all. Miss Doris laughed, not looking the least bit offended. I'm here to bring your sister something borrowed and blue. I'm heading up to see her. Care to join me? Paige nodded, relieved she didn't hurt the kind woman's feelings. I'm glad you're back in town. I've missed seeing your pretty face. Miss Doris climbed the stairs, behind her. I missed you, too. Why don't you come by my place, before you head back out? I'll make us some coffee and those pumpkin pecan muffins you like, and we can have a nice long chat. That would be nice, Paige said, before knocking on the door to her sister's old room. Come on in. Faye was in the room, by herself. Her bridesmaids were downstairs, sipping champagne and nibbling on the snacks her mother had set out to hold everyone over until the reception. Faye looked up from the journal she was writing in. I brought Miss Doris. She has something for you. Everything okay? Paige asked. Everything is perfect. I wanted to take a minute to capture some of it in ink so I don't forget. Faye closed the fountain pen and shut the leather-bound book. Smart girl. You look beautiful. Miss Doris stepped around Paige and held a small wooden box out to Faye. What's this? her sister asked. Open it. Miss Doris's eyes sparkled more than ever, and small laugh lines formed around them. Oh. It's stunning. Faye pulled a sapphire necklace from the box. The stone was small and the silver setting was simple, but the design was beautiful. It'll bring out your eyes. And from what I hear, you still need something borrowed and blue. 
I wore it on my wedding day, so I guess it's pretty old too. Miss Doris chuckled. Between this and my dress, I have all my bases covered. Thank you, Miss Doris. This is stunning. Face at the box down and tried to put on the necklace. Paige stepped behind her and grasped the thin chain when Faye struggled to fasten it. Despite appearances, the shaking fingers showed that her sister was more nervous than she let on. It brings out the color in your eyes, Miss Doris said, looking pleased when the stone was nestled against Faye's chest. It does. It's perfect. Paige watched her sister look at herself in the mirror. Faye's hand went up, and she touched the stone. It is. Thank you. She turned and hugged Miss Doris, promising to return the necklace tonight. There's no rush. I don't have a lot of opportunities to wear it these days, Miss Doris said. That's not what I heard. Doesn't Mr. Griffith take you anywhere nice? Faye grinned, and Paige made a mental note to ask about the man. He is, but not that nice. It isn't like we're going to Shea Paul's, Miss Doris said. The French restaurant was the fanciest place on the island. Paige had only gone to it a handful of times, none of them dates. Thank you for the loan. I'll get it back to you as soon as I can, Faye said, stepping back to the full-length mirror that their mother had put into the room for today. I can take it back when I come see you after Christmas, if that works for everyone, Paige said. Perfect. I'll get out of your hair and let you get ready. See you girls later, and Faye, you are a stunning bride. Enjoy your day and keep capturing those memories. I wish I had thought to do that on my wedding day. After all these years, my memories are getting a little fuzzy. Miss Doris's warm smile lingered in the room long after she'd left. Are you ready to do this? Paige asked, walking to stand beside her sister. I am. I'm so glad you're here. Today wouldn't be the same without you here. Faye looked at her through the mirror. I'm glad I'm here too. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Paige put an arm around her sister's shoulder, glad to have this quiet moment together. Even if we had to drag you down here kicking and screaming, Faye said, the smile on her face and in her eyes softening the words. Something like that, Paige agreed. I know it wasn't easy for you to come back here. Especially this time of year. Thank you, but I mean it. I'm glad I'm here, Paige said, letting go of her sister. Faye turned and looked her straight in the eyes. How was it spending all this time with Liam? Fine. Paige turned and busied herself straightening the bottles and brushes that were sitting on the dressing table her sister received for her 13th birthday. I think it was a little more than that, wasn't it? I saw that look on your face when Kate talked about him. Faye reached for her hand, and their eyes connected once again in a mirror. Somehow, the reflection made it easier to admit the truth. Maybe. Paige felt her cheeks getting warm and didn't think it was a delayed effect of the little bit of champagne she'd had. I know you, sis. You've got it bad. Faye's smile morphed into a huge grin. I barely know him. Besides, it's not like we have a future together, Paige said. Why not? You're single, he's single. Paige barked out a sad excuse of a laugh. He lives here, and my life is in Denver. You could always move back. Faye's flippant response shook Paige to the core. I can't just quit my job and move back home. What would I do? Move back in with mom and dad? Temporarily, if you need to. I'm sure Palmer Elementary would hire you without a second thought. Mrs. Pickens always liked you. Right. Paige shook her head. Her sister's idea was ridiculous. She couldn't just quit and move back home. Paige stared at her phone. The text message Liam had sent her this morning to check in was on the screen, and for the umpteenth time, her fingers hovered over the keyboard, tempted to reply. But what was the point? Have you seen the best man? One of Faye's out-of-town bridesmaids asked. Who hasn't? He's quite the eye candy. Especially in that dark suit. Yummy. He might not be as unattached as you think, Faye said, turning to her bridal party, 
lining up to walk into the main part of the church. Her eyes glanced at Paige, who shook her head. As she took her own place in front of her sister and their father, trying hard to keep her thoughts from appearing on her face. She and Liam might not have a future together, but thinking of him and Kate or any of the other beautiful women lined up in front of her bothered her more than she was ready to admit. Paige felt a warm hand on her shoulder. Are you sure about you and Liam? Faye whispered in her ear. Yes. That's too bad. From what I can tell, Liam is really into you. The music began to play, and Faye stepped back. Paige took a steadying breath and reminded herself that none of it made a difference. No matter how much into her Liam might be, she seriously doubted he would be willing to up and move his life and his business to see where things might lead with her. She put one step in front of the other, her eyes for a moment on the dark wood floor of the church as they moved slowly down the aisle and toward the altar space. Looking up, her eyes roamed across the crowd who congregated to watch the union of Matteo and Faye before landing on the groom and the best man beside him. Liam took her breath away in his dark suit with a black shirt and tie. Paige swallowed hard, feeling a fire burning in her chest. She felt the urge to turn and run. Get away from what was pulling her toward him. Not that it was an option. She blinked and forced herself to focus on Matteo and the preacher instead. It lasted all of ten seconds. When her eyes were drawn back to him, he was watching her with an intensity that made her heart jump, fanning the flames to greater heights. Chapter 20 Do you, Matteo Carlyle Smith, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Liam's eyes drifted to Paige, like they'd done about a dozen times already since he saw her walk down the aisle ahead of her sister, carrying a small bouquet of white roses and looking like a vision in a dark green dress that made his mouth go dry. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't focus on anything else. His eyes kept drifting to her, and when he wasn't imagining what it would feel like to have her in his arms later tonight at the reception during the dance she'd promised him, he was reliving the memory of their trip of finding her sitting on a snow-covered log, playing games, singing, eating vending machine food, and kissing her. The rings. Mateo's elbow digging in his side brought Liam crashing back into the here and now. His cheeks grew hot when he realized this wasn't the first time the good reverend had asked for them. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the velvet box that held both of the gold bands Mateo had entrusted him with this morning. To his relief, the box opened without a hitch, and he didn't fumble or drop the precious items. With every single pair of eyes of the congregation on him, he'd never live that down. The surge of adrenaline helped him pay attention through the rest of the simple ceremony. Before the heat had completely faded from his neck and face, the reverend declared Matteo and Fay husband and wife. One lingering kiss later that ended in laughter and applause from the family and friends gathered in this house of God, it was time to step down and make their exit. Liam waited while Paige returned the larger bouquet of flowers to Faye before taking his arm. Everything okay? he asked. It had killed him not to hear anything from her all day. It was jarring after spending all day every day during their trip. Of course. Two words. It was all he got as they made their way back up the aisle behind Faye and Matteo. The moment they stepped out the door of the church, Paige let go of his arm and went to embrace her sister. Congratulations. I'm happy for you too. Liam shook Matteo's hand before switching places with Paige. Don't give up, Faye whispered when he leaned down to kiss the bride's cheek. I won't. Liam turned to Paige intent on giving her a ride to the reception at the country club. All he saw was a blur of green dress quickly retreating from him. It appeared that Paige couldn't wait to get away from him fast enough. Sighing, he turned, almost bumping into Miss Doris, an elderly woman from their community who had welcomed him with open arms when he'd first arrived. Wasn't that a beautiful ceremony? Faye looked radiant. Miss Doris beamed up at him. She did as did her sister, who was hoofing it to the parking lot. He wondered what car Paige was headed for. Are you driving to the country club from here? Miss Doris asked. 
Liam expected her to jump in line to congratulate the young couple. I am. I hate to impose, but would you mind giving me a ride? I came with Mr. Griffith, but he was called away. She looked a bit perturbed, but Liam wasn't surprised. Mr. Griffith was one of his clients, and while the older gentleman was officially retired, he continued to advise the people who'd taken over his veterinary practice. If there was an emergency, he'd drop whatever he was doing and head out to help. I don't mind at all. I assume you want to congratulate the bride and groom. Liam's eyes went to the long line that was forming with concern. It would take quite a while for her to take her turn, and he was eager to get to the venue and snag one of the parking spots that would make it easy to leave. It had nothing to do with the woman in the green dress who was running away from him. You know what? It can wait. I'll have plenty of opportunities at the reception. Plus, I promised Helen to make sure the cake is all set up. Miss Doris linked her arm in his and started walking in the direction he'd been staring at. I'm parked over here. Liam turned them around. His Subaru was parked around the corner. One of the benefits of having to be here early. What did you think of Paige? Miss Doris asked as he drove to the country club. You got to spend quite a bit of time together on your drive. We did. She's, Liam was at a loss for words. Intriguing, kind, beautiful. No words encompassed everything he felt for the woman. She's nice. Miss Doris broke out into laughter. Uh, oh. You're in trouble. What makes you think that? Liam asked, an eyebrow raised. In my experience, there are only two reasons why a man would refer to an attractive woman as nice. Liam turned onto the road that led up to the country club, waiting for Miss Doris to continue her explanation. The first is when he has no interest in her at all. Something tells me that's not the case for you. I saw you staring at her during the ceremony. As did everyone else, Liam muttered. I doubt it, Miss Doris said. And the second reason? Liam asked, more interested in what the elderly woman had to share than he was ready to admit. The man likes her a lot more than he's ready to admit and thinks the feeling isn't mutual. Hmm Liam did his best to make the noise sound noncommittal, but Miss Doris had seen right through him. From what I hear, she thinks highly of you. Sometimes that's not enough, Liam said. You don't think her feelings are the same as yours? Miss Doris asked gently. I know they're not. She made it very clear that there's no point in starting anything. His voice was rough. Liam coughed to clear his throat. Looking at the two of you, I'd say you're well past starting anything. Miss Doris put her hand on his leg for a moment. The gesture was comforting and maternal in a way that was hard to explain. Maybe, but it makes no difference. Paige isn't interested. Not much I can do about that. I wouldn't be so quick to come to that conclusion, Miss Doris said. Liam pulled into the parking lot at the country club, choosing a spot that would make it easy to get back out later tonight. I'm not making assumptions. She flat out told me. That hurts, doesn't it? Do you doubt her feelings for you? Miss Doris asked. It hurt. And that pain made it hard to look at the whole situation objectively. I'm not sure. I wouldn't give up too soon. I have a good feeling about the two of you. Miss Doris got out of the car and waited for him. She shook her head. I should probably take that advice myself, she said. Mr. Griffith? Liam asked. One and the same. Love's complicated, isn't it? Liam leaned against the wall at the back of the room, watching the bustle in front of him. Dinner had been served, and the staff had cleared and rearranged the tables to make space for a dance floor. After watching Matteo and Faye dance for the first time as a married couple, they'd invited their parents to join them. Liam had looked for Paige, but she'd vanished. Everything okay? Matteo asked, walking to stand beside him. He handed Liam a beer before taking a long draft of his own. Yeah, man. Just taking a breather. You? 
happiest day of my life. Mateo's smile spread across his entire face. Liam was glad to see his best friend so happy, but it was hard to ignore the pain in his own heart at the sight of the happy couple. He wanted this. Someone to love him unconditionally. Someone excited to build a life with him. And not just anyone. He wanted it to be the woman in the green dress across the room, talking to her mother. Want to talk about it? Mateo asked. Talk about what? Liam turned to look at his friend. Paige and whatever you two have going on. There's nothing going on between us. Right. Mateo shook his head in disbelief. I'm not saying there wasn't a spark, but. If this is about me making you promise not to get involved with Paige. Liam sighed. I appreciate it, but that's not it. What is it then? You both look miserable. I can't stand it. I want you to have what I have. What Faye and I have, he added, turning to search the room for his bride. Just drop it, okay? It's not going to happen. Why not? It's obvious you two like each other. He really had to get his feelings under control if it was that obvious to everyone around that he was pining for Paige. Not that it mattered. Because we each have lives, and they are thousands of miles apart. So what's the point? Liam raised his bottle and walked off, desperate to find a different conversation. Liam, come settle an argument for us, Kate, one of Faye's bridesmaids, said. She held her arm out for him and pulled him into her small group of friends. He only half listened, nodding at the appropriate time and doing his best to keep from searching the room for Paige. Don't you think, Kate's words faded away, nothing more than semi-pleasant background noise. Of course, he said. Of course what? Kate's tone was sharp, pulling him out of his stupor. It must not have been the correct response, but he couldn't bring himself to care enough to ask her to repeat her question. They were by themselves. The rest of her friends were on the dance floor, along with Faye and Mateo. He watched the young couple dance, their eyes only on each other. When he finally tore his eyes away and scanned the room, he caught Paige staring at him. Her expression surprised him. It was intense and almost felt like jealousy. But that wasn't possible? Was it? Excuse me, he said to Kate and strode across the room, his eyes never leaving Paige's. I believe you owe me a dance. Chapter 21 Everything okay, honey? Paige's mother asked. Paige nodded and forced her clenched jaw to relax. I'm fine. Getting a bit tired. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Not much longer and we can see your sister and Mateo off. I'm sure your father won't mind running you home after that. Her mother squeezed Paige's shoulder encouragingly, before walking off to talk to Mateo's aunt. Despite her best intentions, her eyes returned to the spot across the room where Liam had been chatting with Kate. The stab of jealousy she'd felt had hit her out of nowhere. She barely knew the guy, and they'd agreed that they didn't have a future together. Why did it matter that he was looking all cozy with Kate? And where was he? Not with the pretty blonde bridesmaid, Paige had taken an instant, disliking to when they met this morning. I believe you owe me a dance, a dark voice, smooth as fancy Belgian chocolate said. Paige turned and lost herself in Liam's beautiful eyes. Why did he have to smell so good? I did, didn't I? He held out his hand and led her out to the dance floor. The first few chords of a slow song played. He pulled her into his arms, moving to the slow beat of the music. Paige felt more confused than ever. What were they doing? They'd agreed to keep their distance. Stop overthinking. It's just a dance, Liam murmured. Paige relaxed and let the magic of the moment take her away. Being in his arms felt like coming home. She let out a silent sigh and wished things were different. You look amazing. Liam took a step back and spun her around. She barely got in a breath, let alone a word, before he caught her and pressed her to his chest. You don't look so bad yourself, she said, a giggle threatening to escape. 
She was a hot mess, riding an emotional roller coaster with no way off. Aren't we a pair? His voice was soft, barely a whisper in her ear as he moved her slowly across the dance floor. Paige closed her eyes and let herself feel. She wanted to remember this moment, recall it throughout the long winter ahead of her. All too soon, the music stopped, and all hopes for a second song were dashed when the band took a quick break. I think I need some air, Paige said when he let go of her. She was missing the feeling of his arm around her waist. Would you like company? Liam looked almost shy. Paige nodded, and he held out his arm, escorting her to the set of double doors that lead to a patio that was filled with people. Without a word, Liam kept walking, leading her around the building to a quiet corner of the ninth hole of the golf course. A wrought iron and oak bench was tucked under one of the large live oaks that dotted the property. It was covered in Spanish moss, the branches low, almost touching the ground. The spot felt secluded and almost private in the light of the setting sun. Paige took a seat. When she looked up at Liam, he was shrugging out of his jacket. He put it around her shoulders. Paige snuggled into the wool garment, still warm and full of his scent. Thank you. Liam sat down next to her. You're welcome. The ceremony was nice, Paige said to fill the silence. It was. Liam kicked a small rock and stared out across the green. Paige leaned back, staring at the gnarled branches of the oak that gave them shelter. An owl flew across the fairway, hooting as it landed in the branches of a tree not far from them. I missed this. The island is special, isn't it? Paige glanced at him, surprised how in tune he was with her thoughts and feelings. It is. It's easier than I thought it would be, she said. Being here, this time of year. Good. I'm sure your family missed you. Especially during the holidays. Liam turned to face her, his face taking on a serious expression. Panic welled up in her. She knew exactly what his next words would be. Please don't. Don't what, he asked softly, his hand reaching for hers. Don't talk about the future. Let's enjoy tonight. She squeezed his hand and stared deep into his eyes, willing him not to ruin this perfect moment in time. Okay. His voice was rough and laced with pain. Paige reached up to caress his cheek. Liam leaned down, slowly bringing his face closer to hers until their noses were about to touch. He paused, giving her time to pull away before his lips brushed across hers. It was a question, a request, and one she was only too happy to fulfill. Her lips parted, and Liam deepened his kiss. He tasted of wine and dark chocolate. Paige lost herself in the feeling of their lips moving against each other, their hands caressing each other's hair and their hearts beating in sync. What began as a sweet kiss, became more urgent. She could feel his desperation, his need. Paige pulled away, gasping for air, grasping for a hold on reality. We should head back. Liam looked as flushed as she felt. He ran his hands through his hair and loosened his tie. Give me a minute. Paige grabbed her purse from the table and pulled out her phone to give herself something to do. Can I get you something to drink? Liam asked. She shook her head. Oh. Liam raised an eyebrow. Paige dropped into the closest chair. The text from Colleen came out of the blue. Check your email. Squee. That's all it said, followed by a line of emojis to express her excitement. Everything okay? Liam asked, taking the seat across from her. I'm not sure. Paige opened her email and scanned the subject lines for anything from her friend. Nothing. Then she saw it. An email from Principal Grant. She clicked on it and scanned the message. No wonder Colleen was excited. This was what they'd worked for all year. Good news or bad news? Liam asked. Great news, actually. My friend Colleen and I will be running the gifted and talented program at the elementary school. Paige couldn't keep a huge smile from spreading across her face. I thought you were teaching third grade, Liam said. Second. 
I'll still be teaching, but also taking over a special program for some of the brightest kids in school. Think of it as an enrichment program. And this is something you've been wanting to do? Yes, Colin and I have been working to get certified all year. I didn't think we'd both get a chance to join the Ganty team. It hit here that this probably meant some of the current teachers in the program had left. Sounds like more work and responsibility, he said. It is. But it's also really interesting and rewarding. And there's a bit of a raise that won't hurt. It wasn't much, but it would make paying her bills a little easier. Especially since her landlord was raising her rent in January. Congratulations. Liam's smile was genuine, and it meant the world to her. Thanks. I was a gifted and talented kid in school, and it made such a difference. It's what made me want to teach. I'm happy for you. When do you start? he asked. He rose and stood in front of her. After Christmas break. Paige looked up at him questioningly. This calls for a toast. He held out his hand. Chapter 22 Merry Christmas to you too, Mom. Liam lounged on his couch, the laptop propped up on a pillow in his lap. His father walked into the frame, holding a Christmas mug. Merry Christmas s. Your mother bought gingerbread-flavored coffee. Much better than you'd think it would be. Liam laughed. Merry Christmas, Dad. What are you doing today? His mother asked. Honestly, I don't think I'll get off the couch today. Maybe watch a movie? He wasn't sure. Between the mad dash out west and back and the wedding, he hadn't had a chance to make holiday plans. I wish you were here. I don't like the idea of you moping around at home by himself all day. It's Christmas. You should be with family and loved ones. I'm not moping around. After yesterday, I'm ready for a bit of peace and quiet. Maybe a nap. As long as he didn't think about the fact that he'd lost Paige for good yesterday, he'd be okay. Isn't there somewhere you can go? Someone to celebrate Christmas with? What about Mateo and Faye? His mother's voice was full of concern. They left for their honeymoon last night. He thought they were crazy. Who'd want to fly up north on Christmas Eve? At least they'd made it, judging by the picture the happy couple had sent him this morning to wish him a Merry Christmas. Oh, right. Leave the boy alone. Spending the day on the couch sounds great to me. There's a good ball game on later this afternoon. His father took the seat next to his mother. His mother shook her head. They chatted a while longer, and even Aunt Lydia spoke to him for a few minutes. The screen confused her but she recognized him, which was a Christmas present of its own. Promise you'll get something decent to eat today, his mother said as they were wrapping up the call. I will. He wasn't sure how. His fridge was empty, and everything was closed. There were some crackers and a jar of peanut butter in the pantry. Maybe he could dig up some dried cranberries to make it feel a little more like a holiday meal. Good. I'll call you later tonight to check in. His mother hung up before Liam got a chance to object. He shook his head and got up to grab more coffee. He was in the middle of eating a bowl of instant oatmeal with brown sugar and cinnamon when his phone rang. Liam, what are you doing today? Miss Doris asked when he answered. Why? Alarm bells went off in the back of his head. I was sitting here by myself looking at the ham I'm fixing for lunch and realized is way too much food for me, myself, and I, Miss Doris said. Aren't you having Christmas dinner with your family? Liam asked. He knew Miss Doris had a niece or something close by. Oh, I'll be over at Sophie's house, but not until later this afternoon. I'm giving them a little time to have Christmas morning and open presents. You know how it is. Her tone was wistful. What about Mr. Griffith? He'll join me later. He's having lunch with his children. Right. Liam wasn't sure what else to say. I have a green bean casserole in the oven, too. It'd be a shame if all this food went to waste. 
why don't you come over for a bit? I could use the company, Miss Doris said. Liam was pretty sure the call and invitation were his mother's doing, but his stomach growled at the thought of Miss Doris's cooking. When would you like me to be there, he asked. Come on over whenever you're ready. We can have a nice little chat on the deck until the food's ready. Liam grabbed a quick shower and pulled a bottle of white wine he had stashed away for emergencies like this before heading over to her oceanfront house. It was one of the oldest houses on the island and nothing like the monstrosities there were being built up and down the Grand Strand these days. This house had a cozy feel to it. He could see someone raising a family in this place. Come on through. I have coffee and biscuits ready to tie us over until lunch is done. Miss Doris bustled back into the kitchen, and he followed her. Is there anything I can do to help? Liam asked. Miss Doris poured coffee into two cups waiting on a tray along with biscuits, butter, and jam. Not a thing. How do you take your coffee? Black. Can I take this for you? He held his hand out for the tray. Thank you very much. Follow me. She walked back into the hall, through the living room, and out a set of sliding glass doors. The deck was spacious, and the backyard surrounding the place was well kept. The true gem, though, was the view of the beach and the ocean beyond. This is beautiful, Liam said. It is, isn't it? You can set this right here. Miss Doris pointed to a table in the center of the deck, surrounded by six chairs. He did as asked and the two settled in. The coffee was hot and strong, and the breeze coming off the ocean had a chill to it, but not unpleasantly so. The bright sun, high in the sky, did much to keep them comfortable, despite the late December day. You and Paige looked cozy yesterday, Miss Doris said, giving him a pointed look. We were. I'm going to miss her. He wasn't sure what it was about the elderly woman that made him open up, but she had a reputation for getting people to share their deepest, darkest secrets. She's going back? I had hoped. Never mind. Miss Doris shook her head. She is. Her life is in Denver. Liam told Miss Doris about the opportunity to run a program for gifted kids at her school. I see. I think we have something like that here, too. Miss Doris took a biscuit and put a generous dollop of jam on it before handing it to Liam. He took it. The biscuit was still warm, and the scent of strawberries wafted up, making his stomach growl. I think she was part of the program here. That's why this is so important to her. He took a bite. Let me guess. You don't want to stand in her way, Miss Doris said. It wasn't a question. All Liam could do was nod his mouth full of flaky, buttery biscuit and jam. Why don't you move out there? To Denver, she asked. Liam swallowed and washed the last of the food down with more of the delicious coffee. I'm not sure I could. My clients are here. Scott's here. Have you talked to him about it? I would think with the technology we have today, it wouldn't matter where you live. And you could always come back for visits and meetings. It's a 30-hour drive, Liam said with a grin. He wasn't sure he wanted to make that trek regularly. And a much shorter flight. I guess it all depends on how much the two of you want to make this work. Where there's a will, there's a way, Miss Doris said before rising to head inside to check on the casserole, leaving Liam to contemplate his future. You're seriously considering this? Scott asked when they met at the roasted bean the next day. Liam had called him earlier this morning and shared his plans. I think I am. I know it's a big ask, but I'm confident I can meet with clients through Skype. And it's not like I won't be back in town at all. I'm sure we'll come for regular visits. Liam was tapping the pen he'd used earlier to write out the pros and cons list in front of him on the wooden table. I don't love it, but I'm not opposed. Let's see how your clients feel about it, Scott said. Most of them should be fine with it. The rest can go back to you. A few of the people he worked with were older and less inclined to use modern modes of communication. Some insisted on in-person meetings and paper copies, which he was happy to provide. 
It would make serving them from Colorado a lot harder, if not impossible, though. I'm happy to take them back. If this is really what you want, you should look into branching out on your own out there. Build up a client base in Colorado. Scott's face was friendly but firm. Liam couldn't shake the feeling that this meant an eventual break with the mentor who'd taken him under his wings and helped him land his first few clients. I don't think you'll have a problem finding clients there, but I wouldn't count on a lot of our current ones to go along with this, Scott said, leaning back. Any idea where you'll live? I'm going to rent for a while. See how it goes and then put my condo here on the market. Liam glanced at his list of notes. The cost of living and the ridiculously high rate of renting even the tiniest apartment were solidly in the cons column. You're still paying this place off, right? That won't leave much to rent out there. Scott looked at him. Liam could feel his eyes scanning his face. I'll probably start with a room. Maybe share a house or a condo with a couple of other guys. That should keep costs down to begin with. Liam didn't like the idea but kept reminding himself that it was only temporary. Right. I guess my best piece of advice, if you want it, is not to burn all your bridges down here. What if things don't work out in Colorado? You don't want to be stuck out there. We have a good thing going here on the island. It takes time to rebuild something like that. Scott's attitude surprised Liam. The man was usually an easygoing and optimistic guy. Today, not so much. What's with all the negativity? This isn't like you, Liam said. Scott stared out the window and was quiet for a long while. Liam was beginning to think he wouldn't get a reply. Maybe you're right. All I'm saying is think it through and make sure pulling up stakes here will be worth it in the end. Scott downed the last of his coffee and took his leave. Liam stayed at the coffee shop a while longer, going over his notes and coming up with a quick and dirty budget. Moving to Colorado at this point wasn't the smartest financial move, but there was more to life than numbers on a balance sheet. Making up his mind, Liam decided to follow his heart. He pulled out his phone and searched for the fanciest restaurant in Denver. The Capitol Grill fit the bill perfectly and hosted an annual New Year's Eve event. He made reservations for himself and Paige before leaving the roasted coffee bean. On his way home, he stopped by the book nook. Liam, what can I do for you today? Sophie, the owner, asked when he walked in the door. I'm looking for a nice card. What's the occasion? Sophie led the way to a display of stationery. Telling the woman I love that I'm ready to follow her anywhere. Chapter 23 Paige, come on in. We're in the living room. Miss Doris stepped aside and ushered her into the oceanfront home. Paige couldn't remember how long it had been since she'd last visited this place. Chances were good she'd come here last with her grandfather who'd been friends with the island's best pie baker and notorious matchmaker. Who's we, she asked as she followed her down the hall. Mrs. Pickens stopped by for a piece of apple pie. You remember her, don't you? Miss Doris walked her into the living room and motioned for Paige to take a seat across from Mrs. Pickens. It's very nice to see you, Paige. Did you have a nice Christmas? The middle-aged woman asked with a friendly smile. I did. It was nice and quiet. Exactly what she had needed after the craziness of the previous days. Good for you. I visited my baby sister. She has five kids under ten, so it was quite the opposite. Mrs. Pickens picked up her coffee and took a sip. That sounds like it could go crazy pretty quick, Paige said, taking a seat and the cup Miss Doris offered. It did. Picture five kids on a cinnamon roll-induced sugar rush ripping into a pile of presents. We temporarily lost the youngest under all the wrapping paper. Mrs. Pickens laughed, and Paige got the feeling the woman didn't mind the chaos one bit. That sounds even more exciting than the Christmas Eve wedding. Paige did such a great job as maid of honor. Miss Doris handed her a slice of apple pie topped with spiced whipped cream. Both smelled to die for and made Paige's mouth water. That's right. 
Your sister got married, didn't she? Tell Faye congratulations. What a fun idea to have the ceremony on Christmas Eve. I bet it was magical. It was, and I'll be glad to tell her when she and Mateo get back from their honeymoon in Vermont. Paige took a bite, and the pie was even better than it smelled. The apples were sweet and surrounded by thick caramel syrup with a hint of spice. They had the tiniest bit of bite to them, and the flaky pastry was perfect. The spiced whipped cream took it over the top. It was all she could do not to moan with pleasure. Vermont in December? Do they ski? Mrs. Pickens asked, looking as surprised as Paige had felt when she'd heard of the couple's plans. Not unless you'd count water skiing. I think the idea was guaranteed snow and a cozy cabin with a fireplace. Paige took a sip of her coffee. It was dark and strong, the perfect counterpoint to the decadent pie. That sounds lovely. Especially if you don't plan on leaving the place all week. Miss Dora smiled and devoted herself to her own slice of pie. That does sound nice. Nothing to worry about, no one to call you. Mrs. Pickens blew up her bangs and drank more coffee. Paige noticed that the woman's slice of pie sat untouched in front of her. Everything okay at the school, she asked, seeing the tense expression on the principal's face. It'll be fine. My best first grade teacher told me she's pregnant and moving at the end of January. I'm having a heck of a time putting out feelers for a replacement over the holidays. Paige shot a glance at Miss Doris. There was no way this meeting today was a coincidence. Why she wouldn't want to raise a child here on Palmer Island is beyond me. It's such a family-friendly place. Miss Doris shook her head, ignoring Paige. She wants to be closer to family. I can understand that. And her husband got a great job offer. It's just the timing. Finding a replacement in the middle of the school year isn't easy. I'm sure it's no different in Colorado. Mrs. Pickens looked at her, and Paige got the distinct impression Miss Doris had prepped her ahead of time. It's not. We are doing quite a bit of shuffling around ourselves, Paige said. Paige, didn't you mention you're considering moving back? How serendipitous that a position at Palmer Island Elementary opened up. If you ask me, it's a sign. Miss Doris looked at her pointedly. Paige bit back a smile. If she didn't know better, she'd think this had all been well planned by Miss Doris. Including getting the current kindergarten teacher pregnant. It was nonsense, of course, but it was situations like this that gave Miss Doris the reputation of matchmaker extraordinaire. It is an interesting coincidence, she admitted. Me being here isn't though, Mrs. Pickens said. Miss Doris told me you were back in town, and I asked if she thought there was a chance we could talk you into staying. And I told her I thought it was worth asking. What do you think, Paige? Something you're considering? Miss Doris smiled at her, not looking the least bit apologetic. It's crossed my mind. Paige looked from one woman to the other. I have a position and a contract in Denver. Do you mind if I email you an offer and you think about it? Maybe talk to the administration out there if you want to consider relocating? The salary won't be huge, but it's enough to live on, and I can offer you a small raise next school year. Yes, please, Paige said. I'm not making any promises, but I'll give it some serious consideration. The thought of teaching kindergarten was appealing even if the money wasn't what it was in Denver. The three women spent a pleasant half an hour before Mrs. Pickens excused herself. What do you think? Worth coming back for? Miss Doris asked when she returned to the living room after walking Mrs. Pickens to the front door. Paige was looking at the offer from Palmer Island Elementary. She's prepared. I'll give her that. I didn't expect her to email me the details immediately. I don't mean to pry, but is it something you can work with? Miss Doris asked. Paige scanned the numbers and did the math in her head. It was a good bit less than what she made in Denver, but it should be enough to rent a little place here and live comfortably. And there'd be plenty of opportunity to pick up part-time work over summer break. It should work. Good. 
I'm sure Liam will be excited to hear about it. Miss Doris offered her more coffee, but Paige declined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Paige said, looking at Miss Doris pointedly. I would never. The elderly woman put a hand to her chest, but there was a bit of mischief in her eyes that told Paige the warning was justified. Promise you won't say anything. To anyone. Not until I make my decision. My life is in Denver. I have friends there. And an apartment, Paige's voice hitched when she realized that she had a full year left on her lease. She'd resigned a few weeks ago, agreeing to the rent increase. I understand. Think about it. Sleep on it. And then follow your heart. It won't lead you astray, Miss Doris said, before Paige said her own goodbyes and left to think about her options. Instead of heading back to her parents' house, she went for a drive across the length of the island, stopping at a beach access. She got out and walked out onto the beach. The chilly breeze blowing off the ocean helped clear her mind. Something about being near the ocean, tasting the salt in the air, and hearing the waves roll up on the beach never failed to calm her. Paige ran the numbers in her head. There was no way she'd be able to pay Denver rent and get a place of her own here on the island. That meant moving back in with her parents until she could find someone to take over her lease. Other than that, this was possible. If it's what she wanted. Paige pulled out her phone and hovered over Liam's number. Shaking her head, she put the phone back in her pocket. This shouldn't be about him. It was about her, what she wanted. You're seriously thinking about this? Colleen asked when Paige called her on her way home. I am. Paige sat on her childhood bed, looking at the pro and cons list she'd made when she'd gotten back. From what you've told me, Denver sounds a lot more attractive. At least on paper. Of course I'm biased. It does, but. Your family is there. And Liam. You've got it bad, don't you? Colleen asked softly. I think I do. Which is crazy. We barely know each other. Paige leaned back and forced herself to imagine what she would choose if Liam wasn't in the picture. It was impossible. When you know, you know. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to miss you like crazy, but I'd hate for you to miss out on a chance to be happy. You could always come for visits, Paige said. You bet I will. I'm already looking at flights for spring break. Paige laughed. Colleen wasn't joking and knowing her friend wasn't giving up on her, no matter what, made the decision easier. Does that mean you're ready to help me pack up my place? she asked. When? I'm not sure. I guess if I'm going to do this, I need to go back as soon as I can. I'm going to have to drive my car back here. So this is really happening? Colleen asked. I think so. I mean, I'll sleep on it and I still need to talk to my parents if I plan on moving back in with them, but yes, I think I've made my decision. Good for you. I know Colorado was always temporary for you. As a friend, I'm happy you are ready to move back home. Even if I'll miss you like crazy. And, yes, I'll be here, for whatever you need. Paige was reeling as she walked downstairs to talk to her parents trying to come to terms with the decisions she was making. Nothing like turning your entire life upside down in less than 24 hours. Paige, what's wrong, her mother asked when she joined them in the living room. Her father reached over and turned off the TV. What happened? You're as white as a sheet. Nothing bad. There's something I want to talk to both of you about. She sat down and shared her plans and thoughts. Of course you can move back in, her mother said, squeezing Paige's hand. As long as you need to. When do you think all of this is going to happen, her father asked. Before the end of winter break. Paige looked at both of them and held her breath. That's not a lot of time. It gives you what? A good week to move? Her father looked at her expectantly. Paige nodded and swallowed hard. I'm guessing that means I need to fly back. A day or two to pack my car and then drive it back here. That's what I'm thinking. 
Do you want me to fly out there with you? he asked. Paige shook her head. As much as she appreciated the sentiment, this was something she needed to do on her own. Let's find you a flight, then. Her mother rose and walked to the laptop she kept on the kitchen counter. Thirty minutes later, Paige had a ticket for that evening, flying out of Myrtle Beach with a layover in Atlanta that would get her into Denver early the next morning. With a little luck, she'd be back for New Year's Eve. Chapter 24 Still moping around? Scott asked when he walked into Liam's office. I'm not moping. Liam opened his laptop and pulled up the latest financial reports. Right. You're just sitting here daydreaming like a lovesick puppy. What's going on with you? Scott asked, pulling out a chair and sitting down in front of Liam. Nothing's going on. Checking on accounts and making sure there's nothing any of our clients need. Don't you have somewhere to be? He asked his friend and mentor. I do, but it can wait a few minutes. This is about that girl you picked up in Denver, isn't it? What's her name again? Paige. Her name is Paige. The woman he couldn't get out of his mind. And what is pretty Paige up to? Scott asked. I have no idea. I haven't heard from her since the wedding. Seriously? I thought you were thinking of moving out to Colorado. Did something change? Or is it still on the table? Scott asked. Honestly, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, but I haven't heard a word from her since I dropped off a card for her on the 27th. A card? Dude, what are you? 75? Scott raised an eyebrow. Liam barked out a sad excuse for a laugh. Even to his own ears, it sounded wrong. Trust me, it made sense. I have this whole thing planned for New Year's Eve. Dinner at a fancy, Denver restaurant and all that. Ah, so more of an invitation than a note asking her if she wants you to move in with her and to check yes or no. Scott grinned. Yeah, I did a little better than sliding a note across her desk, Liam agreed. He wasn't going to send her the equivalent of a do-you-like-me note from middle school. Plus, I'd planned to give it to her in person, but when I showed up, she'd already left for Colorado. Without telling you or saying goodbye? Ouch. Exactly. I'm not sure what I want to do here. It was the reason he jumped at the chance to have coffee with Scott this morning when the older man called. I think the two of you need to have a conversation about all of this. Preferably in person. And it looks to me like you have plans in Colorado. Liam nodded. I'll drive out there. If I leave today, I'll make it in time to check out a couple of places that are available to rent. Go from there. That's more like it. Listen, I've got to run. Good luck, and if it doesn't work out, you have your place here and I'm sure your clients would be happy to have you back on the island. Scott pushed back his chair and got up. Thank you. For everything. And being so cool about this whole thing. Liam stood up and shook Scott's hand. Of course. You're not the only lovesick fool around here. I've got someone special, too. A huge smile spread across the older man's face, and Liam wondered what he'd missed. Scott spent most of his time in December playing Santa and spreading Christmas cheer. They barely saw each other. And something was clearly up. But he didn't have time to worry about that if he wanted to get on the road today. He needed to get gas and then head home to pack a bag for the trip back to Colorado. He followed Scott out of the coffee shop and got in his car to fill up the tank before heading home to pack. Liam, how are you? Everything going well with you and Paige? Miss Doris asked. Her Oldsmobile was parked on the other side of the pump. It is. I'm heading out to Colorado to surprise her for New Year's Eve. Liam wasn't sure why he felt the need to share. It must be the relief from making the decision to drive out even though he hadn't heart from her. How fun. When are you leaving? The woman's steel-gray eyes were sparkling with excitement. For some reason, that sight lifted the last of his doubts. 
Within the next hour or two, he said, watching the numbers roll up on the pump as his tank filled up. Oh, so soon? A shadow of something he couldn't quite put his finger on fell over Miss Doris's face. Better now than never, he said with a grin. I hate to ask, Miss Doris pulled the gas handle out of her car and returned it to the pump. What is it? The concern in the tone of her voice got Liam's attention. I was hoping you could help me with my computer. I don't know what I did, but my email isn't working again. You did such a great job fixing it last time, I'd hope to get you to do it again. But you probably don't have time before your trip. She turned to screw the gas cap in. Liam glanced at his watch. I'll make the time. Are you sure? Miss Doris asked. Of course. If you're free now, I can follow you home and get you taken care of. He hoped it would be a quick fix. If it was as simple as last time, he should be in and out of there in 15 minutes. It was much later than expected when Liam finally zipped up his bag and headed out to the car. Miss Doris had insisted on having him walk her through the video call software he planned on using for remote client meetings and then had made him coffee and packed him a huge bag of food for the road. He'd finally made his way out the door two hours later than expected, rushed home, and thrown a few clothes and toiletries into a large duffel bag. He was heading to his car when he caught sight of a familiar car out of the corner of his eyes. He turned to unlock his car, then did a double take. It couldn't be, could it? Liam couldn't believe his eyes as Paige pulled into the parking lot in her Kia Rios with Colorado tags. His heart was beating in his throat, and his mind wouldn't quite comprehend what he was seeing as she pulled into the spot next to him. Paige hopped out of the car, a huge grin on her face. Surprise. Paige? What? Liam was stumbling over his words. There was so much he wanted to ask. What was she doing here? What did this mean? He couldn't quite wrap his mind around the fact that she was standing in front of him the moment he was about to get in his car to drive out to see her. Liam shook his head. Yes. The grin on Paige's face widened. She took a few quick steps to close the distance between them. Liam dropped the duffel bag he was holding on the ground and reached for Paige. She had her arms wrapped around him and was rising on her toes. It was all the invitation he needed. His lips covered hers as he pulled her as close as possible, crushing her small body against his chest. She was here, in his arms. He felt her warmth radiate through him, heard the ragged breath she snuck before deepening their kiss, tasted the hint of coffee on her breath, and breathed in the essence that was so uniquely Paige. It felt like coming home. A weight he hadn't realized existed lifted off his chest, and for the first time in days, he felt like he could breathe. You're here, he said, moving his lips only as far away from hers as absolutely necessary to get the words out. Paige chuckled, the motion reverberating through his chest. I am. I'm here to stay. You are? He took a small step back and scanned her face. She was serious. I am. That's why I had to rush back to Denver. I am moving back to Palmer Island. I figured the packed car was a pretty good hint. She turned and motioned to the vehicle behind her. Liam's gaze followed hers. She was right. The compact car was packed to the gills with bags and boxes. A pillow sat on the dash in the passenger seat. You drove all the way from Denver like this? He broke into a cold sweat at the thought of her making the drive by herself with most windows covered by her possessions. I did. Honestly, it was no worse than our trip together. At least there was no snow on the roads. She rolled her shoulders and neck before doing her best to hide a yawn. When did you leave? And when did you get back? Liam couldn't fully grasp any of this. I was going to come out to Denver. I know. Miss Doris called me. She did a pretty good job stalling you long enough for me to make it back here. Paige smiled up at him, but the strain from the move was obvious in the corners of her eyes. That's what that was about, he asked. Would you like to come inside? 
yes, please. And more coffee would be great, if you have it. Paige followed him up to his condo. Over coffee, she told him about her decision to move back to Palmer Island and the offer to each at the local elementary school. It's a little less money, and I'll have to stay with my parents for a while. At least until I can find someone to sublet my apartment. She took another sip of coffee. From what I've seen of the housing market out there, that shouldn't be a problem. Liam sat back and kept his eyes on her, resisting the urge to take her hand. Let's hope you're right. Wait. What do you know about renting in Denver? Quite a bit, actually. I have a couple of leads for places I was planning on checking out this week, he said. You really were planning on moving out there to be with me, weren't you? Paige said. I was. I am. Didn't you get my card? Liam asked. I did. Sort of. I'd made up my mind already and was flying home when you dropped it off. I made mom open it and send me pictures. That card confirmed what I already knew. The look on Paige's face told him everything he needed to know. She cared for him as much as he cared for her and was serious about making this relationship work. I can't believe you made reservations at the Capitol Grill. I guess I'll need to cancel those. Unless you're up for making the drive back there. No way. I'm done with cross-country road trips for a while. Besides, there's nothing left for me in Denver. Everything important is right here on Palmer Island. It just took me a little while to realize it. Paige reached across the table and took his hand in hers. It felt small and cold. He wrapped both of his hands around hers. I like the sound of that. But you know what that means? he asked. We'll need some new plans to ring in the new year. Mary used to host a New Year's Eve party at the diner. We could check that out, Paige suggested. I have a better idea. Liam rose and walked behind her, wrapping his arms around her shoulders. Dinner here at my place. I'll cook. I like the sound of that, Paige said, turning as she rose to kiss him. Epilogue Palmer Island, Valentine's Day, the following year. Liam, come on in. We're looking through honeymoon pictures. Paige's mother waved for the young man to come into the living room and join them. Paige pulled him with her and the two of them sat down in the love seat opposite the couch where Faye was perched next to Mateo, holding her phone out to show her mother a series of pictures before turning to repeat the process with their father who was in his recliner. That's a lot of snow, Paige said when it was their turn to scroll through Faye's phone. That's Vermont in January for you. We didn't mind one bit, though. The look Faye shot her new husband melted Paige's heart. We didn't spend a lot of time outside the cabin, Matteo admitted sheepishly. Who can blame you? This place is adorable. And look at all that snow outside. It looks so cozy. Makes me want to snuggle up with a cup of hot cocoa. Faye laughed. That's pretty much what we did. That and watch the snow fall from the warmth of the fire. We should head up there for a trip next winter, Paige's mother said to her father. What about you two? Faye looked at her sister and Liam. Paige saw the mischief and excitement glinting in her eyes. Now that she was happily married, her sister was ready to get everyone else hitched as well. I don't know. A week laying on a beach in the sun sounds more like my ideal vacation right now. Spending three winters in Colorado had been enough. Especially this last one. After that blizzard and being stuck in a motel that wasn't nearly this cozy, I don't think I can drag Paige back into snow country anytime soon. Liam didn't look like he minded. If Paige had to guess, she'd say he was busy imagining what she looked like in a bikini. Give it some time. One summer back home in South Carolina, and Paige will be ready for snow. Faye took her phone and scrolled through more of the pictures, sharing a few of the sights they'd taken in on the way to and back home from the honeymoon cabin. Paige snuggled into Liam's side and thought about how much her life had changed for the better over the course of the past two months. Less than that, really. 
yet, at the same time, it felt like she and Liam had been together for ages. Being with this man, who had seemed like the bane of her existence in Denver, was as natural as breathing. She couldn't imagine her life without him. Where is he taking you for dinner? Paige's mother asked quietly when they got ready to leave. I have no idea. Liam wants it to be a surprise. Paige looked down at the charcoal gray woolen skirt she was wearing. She'd paired it with a form-fitting white blouse and leather boots. A cashmere cardigan for warmth completed the outfit. You look stunning. Have fun. Her mother pulled her into a tight hug for the briefest of moments. It wasn't something she usually did. Especially not since she'd moved back and would be home in a few hours. Ready to go? Liam glanced at his watch. Paige felt a nervous energy radiating off him that was contagious. Of course. Paige put her arm in his, suddenly eager to get the show on the road. Any hint of where we're going? Out to dinner. Liam opened the door of his now familiar Subaru for her and shut it behind her. He was quiet on the drive through town. Paige did her best to fill the silence with chatter about Faye and Mateo's honeymoon. Finally, she gave up and looked out the window. Her breath hitched when Liam pulled into the parking lot of Shea Paul's. It was by far the fanciest restaurant on the island. Are you serious? Of course. It's our first Valentine's Day together. I wanted to do something nice. Liam hopped out and jogged around the car, insisting not only on opening the door for her, but lending her a hand as she got out of the car. They walked hand in hand into the high end restaurant. Mr. Finnegan, this way. The maitre d' recognized him and led them through the main dining room to a small area in the back, Paige didn't know existed. The hidden booth was semi private off the beaten path to the large kitchen in the back. Before either of them could say a word, a server appeared with two menus and a glass of champagne for each of them. Liam emptied his in three gulps the moment they'd taken their seats. Something was definitely up, and Paige got the feeling she knew what this was. Except it was much too soon. She distracted herself from the disturbing thoughts swirling through her head by browsing the menu and sipping her own sparkling wine. The meal was delicious. Liam insisted on three courses, and they splurged on different wines for each of them. Is there anything else I can get you? The server asked, after Paige had taken the last bit of a delicious and rich beef stew with an unpronounceable French name. We'll have the lemon sorbet and whatever wine you recommend to go with it, Liam said. Paige looked up, surprised he'd ordered another set of drinks. Between the various courses and the champagne, they were both well over the limit for driving. Are you sure? She asked. I'm sure. Don't worry, I don't plan on driving. Mateo already picked up the car and is dropping it off at my place, Liam said. It didn't surprise her that he knew exactly where her mind had gone. They'd been in sync since the moment she'd returned to the island. I guess we'll have to call a cab in a bit. Paige decided it wasn't worth the worry. And if worst came to worst, they'd walk. The beauty of living on a small island was that nothing was much more than an hour's walk away and her boots were plenty comfy. Something like that, Liam muttered. He looked relieved when the server appeared with their icy desserts and two tall glasses of champagne. The flutes looked different from the ones they'd had earlier. These were taller and much more delicate looking. The liquid inside was a pale golden color, and the bubbles were tiny. Enjoy, the server said, putting the second of the flutes down in front of Paige, before quickly retreating. Something inside the glass caught the light of the candle that graced their table. Paige leaned closer. What is that? Paige, Liam said, his voice thick with emotion. He waited for her to look up at him. Will you marry me? Paige stared into his eyes before returning her gaze to the item in the glass. Everything clicked into place in an instant, and she recognized the diamond ring in the flute. Paige? Liam asked softly, worry lines forming on his forehead. Yes. Yes, I'll marry you. Her cheeks grew warm when she realized she'd sat there, processing what was happening, 
while leaving him hanging without an answer to the most important question he'd ever asked her. Liam let out an audible sigh of relief. He reached over and took her hand. Does that mean you'll let me put this ring on your finger? He asked gently. Paige let out a small laugh, happiness, and surprise bubbling out of her. Yes, please. Before Liam could take a hold of the glass, she grabbed it and drank it, almost as desperate for the liquid courage as he had been at the beginning of their evening. When nothing more than a tiny drop of champagne remained, she carefully tipped the ring out of the glass and patted it dry on the linen napkin in front of her. Liam took both the napkin and the ring from her and slid into the booth beside her. With shaky fingers, he slipped the princess-cut diamond mounted on a delicate platinum band on her finger. The pride in his eyes as he looked at the engagement ring on her hand took her breath away. But it was nothing compared to the kiss that followed. It was sweet and tender, full of promise, and by the time they parted, the lemon sorbet had turned into a small puddle in the serving dishes. Neither of them minded. Ready to go? Liam asked, his voice husky. Paige nodded and let him lead her out of the restaurant and into the cool night air. Did she say yes? her mother asked when they stepped into the parking lot. Paige's eyes adjusted to the darkness, and she saw her father's car sitting in the parking lot, both her parents standing beside it. She did, Liam said, pulling her into his side and kissing the top of her head. Congratulations, her father said, walking up to shake Liam's hand. And welcome to the family. You knew? Paige asked her mother when the woman pulled her into another hug. Of course I did. Liam came to ask her father for your hand last week. He had this whole thing planned already. A shadow of disappointment flew across her mother's face. Paige laughed. Let me guess. He didn't need any help, did he? Her mother shook her head disapprovingly. Don't worry. We'll definitely need you when it comes to the wedding, Paige assured her. When is that going to be, her mother asked. Paige looked at Liam. How do you feel about a June wedding? June sounds perfect, Liam said, pulling her back to his side. That's four months from now. That's not nearly enough time. The panicked look on her mother's face was priceless. I don't want to wait another year, Liam said, looking at her with concern. It was all Paige could do to keep from laughing. She was sure the excitement and the champagne were to blame for the giddiness she felt. Don't worry. I'll marry you this June, she said, turning to look at Liam. Under one condition. What's that? he asked. That we honeymoon somewhere warm. The End This has been Not This Christmas. Written by Suzanne Ash. Copyright 2022 by Suzanne Ash. Production Copyright 2023 by Suzanne Ash. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe if you want me to put more of my books on YouTube. Visit my website at www.suzanneash.com for more of my books or find me on Amazon.